back to Travolting, covering Face Off, with special guest, Matt Abaldi. Enjoy the episode. All right, we're recording. All right. So, Jeff, how was your week? Um, my week was uh, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lovely week with my girlfriend, Becca. Mm-hmm. Um, we sat and watched a couple movies together. Um, Travolta movies, as, yes. you're, as you know. Um, so you so you guys watched Face Off and uh, that, yeah, we yeah. watched Face Off. We watched a couple other <coughs> Travolta movies that you know yourself and yeah. m- myself will will cover in the future. But uh, great, and you know, working on PD has been mm-hmm. you know its own thing as well. Yeah, the, um, the show I'm the show I'm working on has been long hours. But. Well, you're working with like you're working in a really cool position though. Where you're working with yeah. a lot of different stars and folks, right? Yeah, I'm keeping it on the DL uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah, absolutely, as yeah. you should. You know, it, it's a it's a nice job, but you want to mm-hmm. keep it professional, as you should. Yeah. But anyway, anyway. Aside, aside from our jobs, aside from um, our jobs, we're joined today by a very special guest, as you said in the intro. Uh, Matt Abalde's back. Hey, Matt. G- Hello. Good old friend I've of mine. Returned, yes. I've returned to more bits. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> welcome to my uh, original thought. Yes. Um, I am the original creator of this, so, so, and it's been it's been great having you back. So, Matt, you were our first guest on the show back in the old days of Carrie. Oh, Carrie. Oh, God, uh, yeah. You remember how much you liked uh, John Travolta's hair in Carrie, yes. Stewart? I, it was the best hair in that movie. It's still up near the top of my hair rank. You know, I, that was like the dawn of our hair ranking report, mm-hmm. which you started. Yes, and it's really caught on super well. Like, how looking back, Stuart, how how are you thinking about the hair ranking? Yeah. Well, you know, it started as a bit originally. I wasn't sure if we were going to keep doing it, but I just think it's a fun, like, continual thread to have on this show. Yeah. Um, and yeah. one we're going to continue today with uh with taking our faces off. Right. Because we are covering. Face off. Face off. Off. I'd like to take his face off. I'd like to take his face off. Yeah, Jeff, you're really good at impressions. Uh, I, I, I do my best. It's going to be a tough one. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, since uh, since the carry days, you've had face off locked in for a long time. Yes. Uh, and before we dive into anything regarding the movie, I just want to know, uh, what was your... And what was your jumping point to just immediately call face off? Because you were one of the first claims for this movie. Uh, I mean, you sent me the list of movies and I saw that no one had claimed face off yet. And I said, well, I got to do face off. <laughs> you really slid right in there in that DM because I yeah. think like, I mean, we had a lot of our early folks who we immediately sent them at the list to. Like, I think it was Matt, Adam, um, uh, Mark, Mark, um, Cole, who will have for Pelham. One, yeah, two, three. yeah, yeah. And we had like our early list, and then we yeah. had a, some later folks come on yeah. that you know when we public, you know, publicized that we were doing this podcast, you came in mm-hmm. later. And I feel like it's those folks that got in the early list had that advantage, but you really snatched up face off, and we had a lot of folks come in later who were like, "Well, who's covering face off right now?" And mm-hmm. unfortunately. You had a claim from the start. You had a claim from the start. Yeah. We couldn't drop you. A- everyone wanted face off. Everyone hairspray. wanted hairspray. And everyone yep. wanted wild hogs. Wild hogs. <laughs> uh, we had like five people ask for wild hogs. It was crazy. You covered for your dad, Don. Yes, uh, my dad will be on that episode. Your dad will be on that episode. Yeah. We'll be taking a road trip to your hometown, Huntington, yeah. Indiana. Indiana, Indiana. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. I bet you're really excited for that, Stu. Mm-hmm. I am. Good. But you know, um, we're glad to have you back, Matt. <laughs> We're it's, ready. It's, it's fantastic to be here yes you know how, how do you feel that the show has evolved since your uh, initial appearance uh oh man i mean second episode <laughs> I, I i would say devolve <laughs> whoa hold the presses okay put a pause on the on the conversation and let's dig deep into this one what do you mean by devolve matt uh you know at first it was like focus on the film mm-hmm hmm then that kind of stopped. Are you implying that... If I remember C- C- Carrie, the fever dream that was the Carrie episode, uh, basically the whole thing was just us s- saying the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still do a little bit of that. Um, yeah, We try but... and build it into discussion, though. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh... But then, but then you have someone like Adam Campbell come on. <laughs> yes, the great Adam Campbell. Yeah, for phenomenon. Do, 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 do. 
and uh and I'm gonna... you know uh a bit start to happen <laughs> are you are you implying the show has bits the show that as of right now is on like a minute what what does that say minute five minute five and we still haven't... well you're the engineer Stu. you should know yeah well yeah I'm, it was i turned it the wrong way uh <laughs> <laughs> show, yes, I'm applying that the show has become the, all bits. The show has never had a bit. <laughs> We're not do we will not have bits. I really do live I, with I, Jack Nicholson. Yes. Uh you have Jack hey, Nicholson's room. You guys you guys went longer than I thought you would. <laughs> I thought I thought the, the bit that is this podcast would have ended after like five episodes. Yeah, pe- five pe- episodes. Yeah. Wow. Pe- people thought we weren't gonna make it. Really? Yeah, but I think they discounted your commitment, Jeff. I uh, and I think they discounted your you know my ability to, to your deal ability to be with, sucked in yes. and never be let <laughs> his, go his, and to <laughs> always be br- dragged back clawing yeah. and screaming and crying but, in the middle of the night because you have to watch three john travolta <laughs> movies in the morning and then drive to my apartment <laughs> at 3 p.m in the afternoon running on three hours of sleep and yeah. man you still and you know i'm t- I'm happy to do it you're so happy <laughs> to do it so Stu. happy to do it you're so excited and thrilled it's i look forward to it every other week. i enjoy dragging you out of your life into this yeah Stuart, it, it kind of looks like you're taking your face off right now you're i mean jeff you look like you're taking your face what'd off you just right call now. me uh, you know you know this movie's about swapping faces so i was just making a joke about it as if you were Stuart instead of jeff which you are right Anyway, face off. <laughs> uh, Jeff, do you want to dive face into, off? Jeff, do you want to dive into the context corner on this one? <laughs> well, remember our phone call we had last night, Stu, yeah. where oh, we yeah. sw- we decided, you know, because we're doing this bit where we're swapping roles, that, yeah. that myself, Jeff Sweeney, is, I'm going to be the engineer. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about with bits. We're not doing one right it, now. Well, uh, what I'm saying is, it's like you know, we're doing this strategy for this episode that. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to swap. You guys one. Took we're gonna each sw- other's faces off. Yes. Well, what it is, it's like me, Jeff Sweeney. I'm going to be taking your role, Stewart's yes. role, being the engineer and doing all these things. Yeah, Whereas I mean, I'm, you, still, I'm Stuart, still turning the dials. You're going to be you're going to do the Jeff Sweeney role, where you're going to do the context corner. You got the laptop next to you. Okay. Which is weird because I don't think like. You know, because I don't have an audio engineering background. Yeah. And you're trusting me to do like a good audio recording podcast, yeah. which you have an audio background at least. A little bit. Yeah. Not not a not a bachelor of science. I mean, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> Context corner. Context corner. Uh, because Jeff doesn't want to do it today. Matt is rubbing his eyes and <laughs> <laughs> regretting his life choices that brought him to this moment no! all right go to the context corner Stu. all right so this is Stuart over in the context corner uh climbing in uh so this was originally written in the late 80s early 90s um it was written as a vehicle uh to be sold to warner brothers the original intention was that stallone and schwarzenegger were gonna yeah we're gonna do the uh the face off and that that's the big piece of trivial news yes. that most people that, probably know about that this is movie. basically the reason this movie was written yeah was to have a stallone schwarzenegger vehicle where they could play each other because yeah. you know they were beefing throughout the 80s about who could have the bigger box office who was the bigger action star and it was, yeah. it was obviously schwarzenegger but, yeah, uh, no was. no friends to my director of um our friend i mean yeah. no, like uh i i got some rocky movies yeah. in rambo you do the best impressions um <clears throat> Jeff, thank you. But um, it kind of sat on the back burner for a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if those two guys were particularly interested in the movie. They hadn't done a movie together yet. Well, and like, and no offense to them, it's like, you know, Schwarzenegger and like, this is a type of film that requires, I won't say like the absolute best mm-hmm. actors you can find to pull this off, but it does require a fundamental found foundation of skill yeah and those guys travolta and stallone like can you imagine like me doing a stallone accent yeah. doing a stallone accent doing a schwarzenegger yeah. stallone impression accent like no no fucking way and then you imagine a a schwarzenegger accent doing the the stallone accent like <laughs> no no fucking way yes like e- it, even some of the like dubbing over that they do would just be so hard with both oh, of them. Yeah. Yeah. Their, their mouths do not move the same. No, they don't. 
And like no disrespect to Fessler, literally having like a limp part of his face, but he has a very specific way of moving his mouth. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Schwarzenegger has an accent. It would be extremely difficult. I also think, and this is just apocryphal off my assumption, you mm-hmm. know, as a Stewart, uh, that Stallone and Schwarzenegger had really they had really big heads at this time. Yeah. And uh, I think it kind of took until the 2000s when they when their stars had cooled off a little bit. Uh, Schwarzenegger had done his run as the governor of California. Yeah. Um, which is impossible to fathom <laughs> that he was governor for four years. Um, I think it took that for them to finally kind of do the on-screen stuff with together, like the Expendables and whatnot. And uh, the Prison Break one that they yeah, did. Yeah, the Escape Plan, Escape which plan. they made two sequels to. <laughs> That only had Stallone in it, yeah, right? Yeah, Stallone's in the sequel, Schwarzenegger's not. Who's the bitch now? Schwarzenegger's too busy making Terminator 8 or whatever it was. Yeah, right. <clears throat> uh, so then in the yeah. 90s, now yeah. they're rethinking casting, yes. and it turns into a Travolta, Nick Cage. Well, the movie shit sits on a sh- on the shelf for a little bit. Um, the script, it's with Warner Brothers. After three years, it relapses, uh, goes up for sale again. Warner Brothers isn't doing anything with it. Paramount buys it who ends mm. up making this movie. Uh, after that, they had originally intended for it to be a Michael Douglas Harrison Ford vehicle. Ooh. Which would have been wild. And if you look Whoa. in the... Oh, and Ford was seemingly not too interested in it. Uh, Michael Douglas was mildly interested in it. And as you'll notice, he's actually credited as an executive producer on the film. Yeah. Because uh, so he got attached in that capacity with the option to star. He ended up choosing not to star. He didn't want to do it what was that random movie Stuart, that michael douglas executive produced that we had no <laughs> idea was it wasn't chains of i think gold, it was chains of gold or was it eyes of an angel it was eyes of an angel that was he was one. just a random ass yeah. like executive producer yes. on that michael douglas has executive produced two travolta movies so yeah far. um okay that's an interesting concept yeah. harrison ford michael michael douglas yeah. but um the that didn't happen douglas stayed on as a producer and eventually, um, John Woo gets attached, having come off of Broken Arrow. Yeah. A moderate success, which he worked with Travolta before. Yeah. Really enjoyed the experience of working with him, seemingly. Yeah. Uh, he's immediately like, this guy and Nick Cage. Oh, yeah. The other, like, big weirdo of Hollywood coming together at last in this movie. They're only, they're only collaborative. Yes, this together. is their only collaboration. And it, this is really the only time that this kind of collaboration could happen with them. <clears throat> what do you mean by that, Stu? Like, um, Ed, like they could do, like, they both do fairly, like, direct-to-video action movies nowadays. Things that don't have huge budgets. Um, a lot of things like... Except for John Travolta, who's doing the Truffle Pig movie. Yeah, Pig. Uh, but that doesn't even look like it's that expensive. But like you know, Cage is doing movies like Left Behind and uh, the whatever the, the one where the world knowing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Travolta is doing things like Killing Season and whatnot. These shocking, I haven't done a movie together in that vein yet. But they're both in a period right now in the '90s where they're back in the or they're in the limelight. Travolta is coming off his Oscar nomination with Pulp Fiction. He's a certified star again, top build, A list talent. At the same time, Nick Cage has just won an Oscar, leaving Las Vegas. Yeah. He is just come off of The Rock as well. He's kind of moving into the action star zone off of like his indie persona he started with. Yeah. Um, and he's making his way into the world of action. He does The Rock and Con Air back to back, followed by this. God, back to back, rock and con air. So they're both they both reestablished themselves in this period in the nineties as action stars. It is fascinating seeing those trajectories do literally yeah. come point point together. Yes. This is the only period of time where a movie with this high of a budget, um, this relative gumption to it, uh, could happen with these two guys. Um the one pe- the one period of time where Nick Cage and John Travolta were A-list stars who could sell a movie together and make, like, four times its budget. Yeah. Yes. And that's the context and, corner? And that, that is the context corner. They do this movie. Um, it's a huge success, which we'll talk about at the end. Yeah. But we can just dive right into the movie. Any uh, any pretext, context, thoughts, Matt, yeah, Matt um, what, before what's we your dive history, in? What's your history with this movie? 
I mean, I I I I love me some John Woo. You know, of uh, MI two is is the greatest Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's interesting take. <laughs> interesting take. Uh, I mean, it's it's one of those films that is just like a cult classic. You know, uh, I hadn't seen it before. You had not seen it. I'm. I'm uncultured swine. <laughs> you, this is your first time seeing Face Off? That is crazy. It is also wow. my first time seeing Face Off. Really? Yeah. Believe it or not. Really? I I had sent, uh, uh, Jeff, I had sent you, uh, it, the, the, I believe the two, I've only seen two uh, Travolta movies. Mm-hmm. It had been Carrie and Wild Hogs. I have not seen any <laughs> other Travolta movie. What is it with Wild Hogs? What is it with this movie? I saw Wild Hogs on a plane when I was like eight. <laughs> that's a, that's the perfect description of the kind of movie Wild Hogs is. I saw mm-hmm. it on a plane when I was eight years old. <laughs> before like you know, you could dream. select. Yeah. Before Matt. you could select the movie you wanted to yeah. watch, it was just like plane. They, the the screens fold down, and it's just what's playing is playing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was wild hogs. Amazing. So for me, Jeff Sweeney. Yes. Um. I had I have seen this. I I think this is my third time seeing this movie. Mm-hmm. I love this movie. Yeah. I'm a fan of it, and I'll revisit it like at least once a year, mm-hmm. where I just need like a movie that I can like literally shut my brain off. Yeah. And just watch the fireworks and the the mad effed up nature of this movie. Because there's a lot of fucked up bits, mm-hmm. and in a comical way, but fucked up nonetheless. The thing that makes this movie, and we'll talk about it when we get to specific scenes, but the thing that makes this movie so so like amazing is how at the end of the day it's trying to like retell the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> wait, it's like a biblical wait, retelling. <laughs> wait, Stu, are you? Are you finding deeper meaning in this <laughs> than either really is again? No, that's usually a you thing. Jeff. That is usually but, a me thing. But you know, there's like so, so, and I don't mean that as in like I think it's a, a deep way of looking at the Bible or anything like that. I mean like John Woo just decided rather than make a crazy action movie, what if we centered it in the battle between the angel of, of death? And the angel of life. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Matt. That 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 one time when they take subtext and put it as the text, but it's so so in there that you think it's subtext again. Yeah, it, it comes right back around at you. Yeah. Well, the one it, of, it, you could you could I mean I I can understand that like like i get that like thinking about it with that in mind like mm. you can see that within the film for sure Stuart, are you gonna do a 180 where where a couple weeks ago i talked about how phenomenon was the jesus story yes. now you're gonna talk about how this is the jesus story i'm not gonna say necessarily the jesus story i, I mean less like the specific stories of the bible more the overall text mm. as like the, the battle of good and evil in a biblical sense it begins and ends in a church. Okay. Uh, we'll get into it as we talk about the movie. I mean, it begins and ends in... I mean... It begins in a... Ch- begins or it begins a, in a convention center where there a, is a church happening. It begins in a carousel and ends in a house. <laughs> if you want to get real technical about it. That, that's true. If, if you want to get really technical. Yeah. But, you the know... The opening scene is a carousel. Jeff, you're usually ready to go along with these kind of things. So I'm just going to assume that this is a weird... Uh, thing you're doing right now <sighs> how long are we gonna do this for <laughs> do what uh nothing so anyway <laughs> um, um let's just dive right in yeah let's dive in all right so the opening scene we get this it's amazing... already the most extra thing ever <laughs> yes <laughs> uh it's this title credit scene that flashes in within text mm. and flashes in within like this like blurry motion of like a flashback sequence and already you can tell that John Woo had a fair bit of freedom in this movie. Yes. He it, he has said that this is the only Hollywood movie he made where he had absolute freedom. Yeah. No, not a lot of studio interference yeah. into it at and all. Partially, benef- his Travolta and Cage were kind of beneficiaries of that kind, of protecting him from that because they believed in the project as well. 
Yeah. But uh, you can tell right from this that John Woo absolutely had no studio interference. Uh, as it flashes between a carousel and <laughs> John Travolta holding his son, the carousel. <laughs> Nick Cage with a huge mustache and a sniper rifle. A huge mustache. <laughs> uh, Stuart, how are you going to be doing the hair ranking today, given the conundrum with the face-off with the switch? Uh, this is going to be a difficult one, but believe you me, I, I have it. I have it. I have it down. I'm so excited mm-hmm. to hear what you, Stuart yes. Elmore's hair ranking. Yes, I'm going to have. I have a hair ranking. You, Stuart, as always, are going to lead this hair ranking. Yes. We're as, not switching as it always, up. I we're not switching it up. It's not going to be me, Jeff. It's still going to be you, Stuart. Yes, so. I will be doing the hair ranking. Why do you doubt me? I'm not doubting. I you. said I'm going to do it. I'm just really excited to hear what it's going to no, be. I'm going to do the hair ranking. Okay, so yeah, Carousel, um, John Travolta and his son, they're on the carousel. Yes, Nick his Cage, son Mike, Michael, Mikey, little Mikey, Mikey, Ubracchio, <laughs> Mikey Ubracchio, look who's talking. <laughs> Matt just already. I just I think there need to be more intros like this now. <laughs> like just the amount of because it, it's like black and white to begin mm. with. It's not yeah. just slow shots of like a carousel and, and John Travolta this kid and and the cage. It's all in black and white. It's black and white. It's de- it's extra desaturated. There's like a halo around the screen. It's and all, there's all these crazy cuts. It's like 12 frames per second yeah. blurry motion. You yeah, know, it's all slow mo. Yeah, and and it's all slow mo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like I have written down. I, I took notes uh, for half of this movie. Uh, I have written down just Nick Cage seductively drinking in slow mo. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that is you know. I saw that and I was like, ah, oh, this is this is exactly what we need yes. in in 2021. This <laughs> this will get people back in theaters. <laughs> this is what we need to bring theaters back. This is absolutely what we need to do. To screen fa- there's so many times, Jeff, it is to my understanding you watch this with your girlfriend yeah. and she was telling me that throughout the movie you kept looking at her and saying, "Why isn't every movie like this?" Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> I had that thought because, like, if every movie had this intro, I mean, we wouldn't have to worry about the, the movie theater yes. industry anymore. Yeah. People would flock to the theaters in droves. Mm-hmm. And Well, it's like, you know, this Star Wars crawl, you know? It's yeah. like, I prefer this over a Star Wars crawl. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we talk You know, to- like, like if you go and sit down like a, to watch a Star Wars movie, you got to read. <laughs> so fucking lame. And it's like, with, with this... They take the time to make sure you understand what's happening. You understand the stakes of this movie very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's so that right away. And the stakes are that such that that Nick Cage has a sniper rifle. Yes. He's a bad guy. He's trying to kill Sean. He's a, Sean his name is Archer. Caster uh, Troy. Caster Troy. Is Nick Cage's character. Is Nick Cage. Yes. Uh, but he's also John Travolta's character. But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Uh, or is Wait, John can Travolta's I, can character. Can I just really quickly say, if you guys rent this from Prime Video... If you ever rent some from Prime Video, you pause the movie and it has like the little uh, X ray thing at the bottom of the yeah. screen where it lists the cast. Halfway <laughs> through this movie, it switches the two of them. No, it does yes. not. No, if it you does start, not. If you, like, I started the movie and I paused and it said, like, John Travolta, Sean Archer, Nick Cage, Casper Troy. Get Halfway the through the movie, hell. if you pause it again, it says, John Travolta, Casper Troy, Nick Cage, Sean Archer. Get the fuck out of here. <sighs> I love that. It's so fucking. It's so, so much. But so but, Nick Cage gets a sniper rifle. Uh, Castro Troy gets a sniper rifle. Yeah. Shoots Sean Archer, but it goes through FBI his agent. shoulder. FBI Sean agent. Archer. Yes. It goes through his Top shoulder. FBI agent. Into his son Mikey's heart. Yes. John, uh, Sean, and Mikey all fall off the carousel. Sean's still alive, crawling to his dead son. Yes. Holding he him in his arms. Grabs him and screams. Fade to black. Uh, and here comes my second note. Uh, that kid is bad at acting uh, as acting dead. <laughs> wow. uh, uh, you would think with the way they shot it, because they don't show his face. Yeah. When when he's dead, you would think that they would have used like a mannequin or something. Mm. But no, you could tell it's the kid because he moves his arm <laughs> <laughs> in slow mo. <laughs> he's just like. <sighs> John Travolta dead. goes to like hold his son. 
and in doing so bends his arm awkwardly so he like readjusts it <laughs> to like grab onto John Travolta's yeah. arm. <laughs> Have you ever seen the orc in Lord of the Rings that gets back up after being killed? No. At the end of the Fellowship of the Ring. I'm surprised you know this, Stuart. Usually it's me who knows all these Lord well, of the Rings. Well, after we saw the movie a few weeks ago, I looked it up. Right. But uh, if you look during that last scene where, like, you know, they they fight all the Urukai, um, and then Aragorn kills the big one, and he runs over to Boromir, and they have their little moment, and we all cry. Um, when he's running over there, you can see an orc, like, really heady, heavy in the foreground. Like, get up, look, and then lay back down. Like, he thought that the, they had cut the roll and wanted to check and see if he could get up. Um, it's very funny. I mean, in this case, it's a little kid, Matt. Yeah. I'm going to go wheezy on him. No, like, we're going to rail into this kid. You know, this kid probably was working eight out of his nine hours, and he was probably really tired. For that really one tired. shot. For that one shot. And he's probably really tired. You know, he got his meal in five hours in and then he was working for three more hours mm. and just got a little tired you know yeah. he was just ready to go home you know and the kid probably spent how many hours in the makeup chair to get them all bloodied up and all that stuff a few hours yeah so like go f- fuck you matt yeah. <laughs> anyway so cut to black cut to black six years later end game style end game style it's like six years later yeah um we immediately pick up with fbi agent John Sean Archer. Sean Archer in the office. Travolta's it, it, doing a weird accent. He's doing like kind of a southern accent, like vaguely. It's like his accent that he that he always has, which is like a weird twang to it in spite of him not being from the south. Like like if I were to place him somewhere, I would assume that his character is meant to be from like Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And then but he's also doing like a nasally voice. Yeah. yeah. He's like, we got to find this guy. Like, what the fuck, Gina? <laughs> uh, he does that a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had I had tried to it does it does a shot that like pans down on all his awards on on yeah. on the wall. <laughs> Only one is legible. The rest <laughs> you can't freeze frame it to to be able to see what they read, but it's a presidential leadership award for outstanding service for the benevolent Benevolent Association of Greater Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm in case, glad. In case anyone was wondering, he has well, been good honored for by uh, H.W. and Clinton. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did not have sexual relations. Yeah, <laughs> you can do a. I'm really good at the yeah. Clinton, yeah, the Clinton voice because um, I'm Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one thing I want to point out here is like we're immediately in inside in the middle of like a manhunt happening yeah. like they're, they're trying yeah. travolta's been on the hunt for f- six years to find caster troy and they think they might have it, i got. feel like the it's also kind of implying that it's been longer because mm-hmm. he was like targeting archer mm-hmm. as an fbi agent so yeah before the six years they've been facing right. off for a while they've been it was like off for they, a while. they were he was looking for him and then he killed his son <laughs> and then shit got real yes and then six years happened and then six years. And I, I like a line Travolta or Archer has here. He says, get in the war with LAPD intelligence if there's such a if thing. If there is such a thing. <laughs> if there is such a thing. Well, I live in L.A. There isn't. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, uh, what the, I want to point out here is during all like the, the franticness that's going on in this scene when they're like focusing on this manhunt that they think they might know where he's going to be, John Woo has this like weird corral choral music going yes. on like this or- orchestral choral music and you john powell and was it, the composer of this movie and you don't really get the connecting thread of why this is happening during the scene yeah. until cut to well well the thing is it's a very biblical story okay i know but <laughs> i'm just speaking in the context yeah. of you as the viewer watching this for the first time really quick aside john powell uh was the composer of this movie yeah he comes from Hans zimmer's little school yeah um, his first two movies were this and ants, <laughs> like the Woody Allen. What are you gonna movie. say about ants, man? <laughs> Nothing. What you got to say about ants, dude? <laughs> Do great. you have anything to say about ants? Because ants is the fucking greatest movie of all time. But you mean that that 1998 Woody Allen Dan Aykroyd animated vehicle? It was, an it was a DreamWorks. You know Oscar what? I winner. prefer a Bug's Life. I'm pro Bugs Life on this. I'm one. pro ants. They show an army Jeff, of ants Jeff, and termites 
fighting each other. This is fair. And we see a head, like a decapitated <laughs> ant, give his final words and die. <laughs> Do not tell me Bugs Life could suck a dick. <laughs> Jeff, you're getting really animated today. Ants is the way to go. Well, Finally you know, is. since, you know, yeah. we are who we are. Yeah. and John, is, John Powell's score kind of whips in this movie. It's pretty good. It does whip. And so in the context of the viewer, as this frantic manhunt yes. is happening in this FBI office and this chorale music is playing, you're like, what is this like? Just cor- chorale? Yeah, like chorale. Choral. Well, no, no, there's choral and then there's choral. chorale. Oh. There's, there's cor- both. The, the chorale... Coral is C H O R A L. Corral is C H O R A L E. Okay. Right, it's, but it's a chorus. But yeah, it's essentially the Coral. same thing. It's the same thing, motherfuckers. Stu, you should know this. You're a music major. Back me up on this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's like this weird cho- choir music going yes. on with orchestral <laughs> undertones. Found the middle ground. And then during this, and then we cut to yeah, um, this L A L A Convention Center. Yes, there's a Church choir, yeah, perform singing, singing Handel's Messiah, yes. Hallelujah. Handel's Messiah, Messiah. Anyway, uh, Nick com- Cage is- and who comes through but the false prophet, uh, Nick Caster Cage, Troy, Caster Troy Nick in, a, Cage. in priest robes, and he j- had just armed a. He, he is arming. He's an arming. An, yeah, and I have I have another another Matt note. Yes. Uh, you shouldn't smoke near explosives. It doesn't matter how like thermally insulated it is. <laughs> There's always a risk. As someone who has like had to take courses in like explosive handling for like SFX stuff, never smoke near any kind of explosive. I mean, Caster Troy just doesn't care. He's a he's a bad guy, man. He's a. <laughs> I wrote down Nick Cage as a priest doing terrorism stuff. Yes. Like that, uh, that's kind of what which he is. does sum up the movie pretty well and by the way to like yeah that is for people who are wondering like who is this caster troy like what kind of a criminal is he <laughs> with a, a the, basically we just get like he's like this obscure work for hire terrorist mm. well we don't even get work for hire he's just a terrorist we just get he's terrorist and he likes doing terrorist things and that's all we know that's all we know he likes killing kids and blowing shit up because it's fun yes that's it Yes. It's kind of like, we talked about this, Stu, on Broken Arrow, when we talked about, like, John Travolta's motives, like, yeah. how kind of, like, weak and paper thin they are, but if it's you because put... John Woo doesn't care. Well, like, but if you put a care, an actor in that role and they really flesh it out, and I feel yeah. like that's what John Woo is doing with Castro yeah. Troy and Nick Cage, is that, why is Castro Troy doing half the things he's doing? I don't know, but Nick Cage plays it off really he's well. Selling Nick he's Cage selling Nick Cage knows it. that's all that matters. Exactly. And so... Like, what a honestly this is so people like to meme about nick cage yes uh, for good good reasons but wait wait a minute people like to meme about nick cage uh what? jeff has just put up a uh a, a a pillow of nick cage that says <laughs> despite all my rage i am still just nicholas cage <laughs> Jeff, that's a good build. Huh? Like, so please tell that. me more about how much we like to meme about Nick Cage. Continue, so Matt. Nick, Nick Cage likes to be memed about, but this movie is honestly like if, if you're an aspiring actor, this movie is not a bad place to start to be like, what movie should I watch as an aspiring actor? Nick Cage is this is a showcase of his talents. Yes. Yeah. This, More this, so this, than Travolta. This isn't something John like, Wu John Wu basically went, What is Nick Cage really good at? Let's play up to that. Yes. Let's just play to Nick Cage's strengths and just like ignore any weaknesses he has. And even at that, Nick Cage both of them get to deliver two separate performances in this movie. Yeah. And Nick Cage is really selling both of them. Well the thing is, what's what I think it's I mean this John Travolta's top build in this, and then Nick Cage. Yes. Which is kind of reversed for me, Mm because Nick Cage has a lot of the legwork in this movie. Yes. Uh, John Travolta plays his good guy version in the first, like, what, 20 minutes of this film? Something like that. And, you know, he he gets to, like, lay the groundwork for how we get to see this character act, and then we see Nick Cage laying the groundwork for how his caster Troy acts. And... You know, there is a little bit of effort that John Travolta has to put into, like, the Castor Troy element. Yeah. But here's the thing. 
They both have to act like the other person that yes. they are faced off as. Meaning, yeah. Nick Cage, who, when he is Sean Archer, but Nick Cage. Yes. Pretend, but he has to pretend to be Caster Troy. Yes. That acting element of him pretending to be this cool dude, act crazy, yeah. Nick Cage can do. John Travolta, who has to pretend to be this crazy dude, act normal, John Travolta can really do. But who has the more of the legwork to pull off? It's the guy who has to play the normal dude pretending to be a crazy dude. And that's where you get Nick Cage's antics, yeah. regardless of whether he's the caster Troy or Sean Archer. Because yeah. when it's Nick Cage's Sean Archer, he has to do the crazy <laughs> caster <laughs> Troy franticness. Yes, exactly. Whereas like John Travolta acts as the cool, smooth, like hero cop. And then he acts as like, oh, I'm the bad guy, but I got to yeah. pretend to be the cool cop. Yeah. Not not much like work. Yes. So, with all respect, they are both doing good performances, but Nick Cage, Nick Cage without a doubt, has, has, the, like, has the most uh, to pull. Yes. And he's pulling it. He is pulling it. He's really pulling it. For and most of this our, first, our first bit to show that he's pulling it is... Is the way he walks out in that first scene. the way he drum. walks out in that first goddamn scene. He just comes out and he just starts... Like, twerking his twerking head. Twerking his going head. Going straight for how the music... Go, like, he just... Here's the beat, and is like, all right, we're we're on this. Yeah, he's yep. In, and then he walk, and then he walks, walks up to the up chorus. To this choir he, well, girl. he struts up to the chorus, dancing. Yeah. And one of the chorus girls drops. Uh, her Wait, sheet you, music. you forgot? You forgot? Nick Cage headbanging to choir music. <laughs> yes. Ha- yeah, headbanging to Handel's Messiah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He, he comes up to that uh, to that choir girl, and he, he grabs the paperwork and has, I presume, the activation codes on it. Yeah. Um, cause she's in with him and then he stands behind her and he grabs her ass and he just <laughs> looks at the sky and just how uh, for audience who are going to listen to this, yeah. cause we are not video yet. How, how can we best audi- auditorily vi- illustrate? He has basic? like, he has, he, he, <gasps> he, comes. he has, a, he, has an he, or, he, he has an orgasm. He has an orgasm. Yeah. He has an orgasm. Yes. Um, like, Think like the most comical orgasm face he could think of. That's he just the second he touches her ass, it's just what he does. Yes. Yeah. Immediately. Immediately. And this becomes a recurring thing that Caster Troy does throughout this movie. Well, and what's interesting is Sean Archer touches people's faces a lot. Yes. You notice that? Yes. That's with his family. The way they know that it's the real Sean Archer is yeah. he like they they do that face thing. They do that lot. face thing where he touches their face. But whereas Caster Troy, what does he like to do? Is he, he touches... likes to grab people's asses. Yes. Opposite ends of the spectrum. Yes. An Good ass an grabber or a face grabber. Angel of life, angel of death. Yeah, what am I saying? <laughs> and what am I saying? What are you what saying? What am I saying? What do you say it's doing? Um anyway, <laughs> so he he struts out. Well, is it Oh wait, no, this is uh, the next scene. Where I was thinking about. Well, then, like they they find out. So Sean Archer and his FBI team find out that they're gonna catch a plane with his brother. They find out that Castro's brother Pollux Pollux Troy, Troy played are, by um, what's his name, uh, Alessandro Nivoli with the strangest voice ever. Yes, he's in this movie talking like this. Stu, are you doing uh, uh impressions now? Yeah, I just thought it'd be fun. Uh, he's like, yeah, I don't want to miss my plane. It's very strange, but um, he uh, they catch that he's ca- his brother's catching a flight, uh, and they assume that Castro will be aboard the plane. So the entire LAPD seemingly <laughs> goes to ca- catch this uh, this jet. Yeah. Meanwhile, Castro Troy gets on this plane. Yes. And Stu, do you want to illustrate us the scene that's about to happen? Where he grabs the flight attendant. Yeah. Or we, who we think is the flight attendant. And uh, he's just like, um, I'm not good at impressions. So he's like, uh, would you like to suck my tongue? Um, and he sticks his I, tongue I, out. I love how you guys jump over probably just like the coolest Nick Cage has ever looked. With oh, that yeah, when he walks up. Red suit with the the two golden like inlaid like magnums. Mm. <laughs> 
I, I just think on his back. <laughs> this is a two hour, 18 minute movie. It is conceivable this would be an hour and 45 minutes if you made all the slow mo go at regular speed. Yeah. Oh, I, I think this is a like, this is a short film. <laughs> yes, it's just so much slow mo. <laughs> a lot um, of slow mo. But Nick Cage looks incredibly cool. His like, his suit jacket's bellowing in the wind. Uh, he gets on, he says, well, suck my tongue. Uh, um, she sucks his tongue. And then. Who shows up? The FBI. No, you missed it. What did I miss? You missed the peaches line. Oh, the peaches line. Do you want to tell us about the peaches line? Well, yeah, the, like, the, the peaches thing is kind of gets important. It kind of becomes important. And then he's like, "Do you like peaches? So I could eat a peach for hours." <laughs> uh, and then what he, the like, fuck does it. that mean? He talks about peaches a lot in this movie. He talks about peaches a lot, and it's definitely like an innuendo for yes. something. But right. like, I the could eat a peach, peach for peach hours. Peach emoji is an ass. So yeah. he can eat an ass for hours. He clearly has a lot to do. He clearly has a lot of interest in asses. And eating them. Caster Troy eats ass. <laughs> <laughs> like groceries. <laughs> <laughs> this is his canon. He likes to eat the booty like groceries. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> he can eat peaches for hours. Yes. Well, this said. line does is not a one and done. By the way, it folks. comes back a lot. It comes back a lot. He talks about peaches a lot. This, this peaches movie. metaphor does not die here on this plane. John John Woo was ahead of his time. He knew that the peach emoji would mean ass. Yes, he did. That's a really <laughs> in good 1997. point. Nineteen ninety seven. It's a really good point. It's like if we have technology in the future where we use inanimate fruit to yeah. decide how we're feeling, people are going to send peaches to mean ass. John Woo just he knew the, he knew the culture. He did. John Woo has a habit of making movies that aren't appreciated until after their time uh, by yeah. the culture. And I think that this is an example of that with the peaches. Probably. Yeah. That's Probably. The so, yeah, FBI shows up. Yeah. It's uh, a they're after Castor and Pollux, who, a, by the way, are named after Greek mythology. Yeah. Uh, Castor and Pollux were two twins who were turned into the constellation Gemini by Zeus. Gemini is the evil sign. Yes. Yeah. Fuck all those Geminis out there. Yeah. <laughs> Get wrecked. Yeah. Um, but the plane tr- attempts to take off. It turns out the uh, flight attendant is a FBI informant. Yep. As is the pilot. Uh, Nick Cage grabs the uh, the FBI agent. Is the pilot an FBI informant? Yeah. He, he's in on it somehow. Or like okay. the co-pilot or some, someone like that. But uh, Nick Cage grabs her and sticks out the window and is just like, hey, Archer. and Because he sh- he's in a Humvee chasing yeah. the plane. Well, he's running at them. Yeah, he's fl- <laughs> he's driving towards the plane in a Humvee. <laughs> and oh, I, yeah. I was watching that and I was like, plane versus Humvee every <laughs> single time. Plane is going to win. They they do play a game of chicken in this that's like, not going to go all well. All the LAPD and the helicopters are chasing the plane. John Charles is the only car driving at it in his Humvee. It's like, how do you think they strategize this in the boardroom? It's like, all right, so everyone's going to be chasing the plane, but uh, Jimmy, you and I, we're going to be in no, the Humvee. No, John was already on the way when they strategize this. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> yeah, he, he follows no plan. I also, I do love, I was, so I was getting prepared to shit on this movie Yeah. for its lack of aviation physics. Lack. Because I was convinced watching it that, because the Humvee keeps getting closer and closer, yeah. right, to the, to the front of the plane, and I was convinced they were gonna have them take off like on a dime. Yeah, you know, which you need space to be able to take off. You can't take off at <laughs> like twenty mph. I've played right. Microsoft Not flights. Just that, like <laughs> it, uh, you need space to be able to get the height. If you would have passed over the Humvee, you can't yeah. like as close as the Humvee was. They weren't gonna clear it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, they... uh, and I was getting so ready to be like, "Man, John Woo doesn't understand physics," but he does. But, uh, but he does because the Humvee spears out of the way from the plane because plane and... versus Humvee, plane wins. And the pilot's like, "I can't take off in this distance." Yeah. And by by the way, there's no CG in this scene, as near as I could tell. Like, this is a real plane with real helicopters flying around it and real cars chasing it. And a real helicopter. Uh, there's definitely some keying in of Nick Cage in, yes. and, 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 Tr- and John Travolta into the scene. Yes. But yeah, like, everything is happening. 
everything like every plate on there has been shot practically yes thing, i i wrote this down that the sfx of this movie is fucking insane out of this yeah. world like from the big explosive sequences to like the small like surgical sequences yeah. like the sfx in this is like very impressive just fucking amazing in this like um i had actually i'll, I'll save this question for for when we actually get to that scene the I surgery gonna, scene yeah okay well so I, I have i have a question about the surgery scene um caster troy in front of sean archer kills one of the, the yeah undercover yeah. agents that were is in the plane and then he kills the pilot after travolta shoots the engine out and they can't take off because travolta gets on a helicopter instead yes. of the hum yeah travolta gets on the helicopter and so he's tom cruising through yes <laughs> on this helicopter and he's like slamming the the like the flaps yeah. shut so they can't yeah. get any traction lift. And so, like, the plane can't take off. He shoots an engine out, so they can't take off. Again, this is the also, Fast and uh, Furious uh, problem, <laughs> where they don't have, like, they seem to have a limited runway here. Yes. Um, but uh, Runway in uh, Fast 6 is back, so funny. Back to me shitting on John Woo for not understanding play, uh, aviation physics. Uh, a single bullet wouldn't take out an engine that quickly. But it would f- in the, it would in for the sure, alert world of this movie, it It would for would. sure take out an engine but it would be damage that happens like over time. Yeah. They would be in the middle of the air and then the engine would fail. Yeah, basically. I, I like that for all of the physics defying in this movie, the one that gets here is the bullet in the engine. It's Dude, the, av- the aviation hand, the stuff. I dropped and then uh, also, <laughs> that helicopter should have crashed into that plane. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't. It, it just shut its flap. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it shut. It just shut the wing flap. flap. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, to no any more FBI Matt. agents listening to this, uh, don't attempt that move. You will crash the helicopter into that plane. <laughs> it will immediately explode. I, I think you got to stop asking questions, Matt. I think it totally works. <laughs> I think it absolutely, you know, is within the laws but of physics. Because the plane can't take off, Caster turns it into a hangar and crashes it into it. Yep. I would like to say. Last year, the motion picture Tenet came out. Uh, Christopher Nolan. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you saw that movie. I did. Yeah. Did there, you see that movie? Uh, I don't. I can't remember. I did. I, did. I think you may have, but yeah, you I probably saw, didn't get through the entire film. So I didn't finish it though. But I got through yeah. this scene. Yeah. Um, I Stewart got through this scene, um, where the Nolan got a lot of plays because he crashed a plane into a hangar, 747 a real into plane. A yep. Just like to point out. 20 years earlier, John Woo had him beat. Yep. The, uh, the difference is that that was a 747. <laughs> versus this was like a smaller like private a, jet. Yeah. Still, still, it's been done. And do we know for sure it wasn't a miniature? It uh, it, it was, def- it it sure was definitely real. not a miniature. It sure looked like a real There point. are a lot of things you, you can look for in miniature. When you're doing a miniature and you're doing any kind of crash or explosion, you have to shoot it in slow mo. Yeah. Um, because motion doesn't scale. Um, and you you could tell it was not shot in slow motion. There'd be artifacts from like the film and stuff that you'd be able to tell. Oh, mm-hmm. All right. Um, well, this might it's good to have an SFX expert on this episode. <laughs> By the way, Matt's an ex- SFX guy. He knows, yeah, he knows I, the deal. I cut my teeth as like a production designer and VFX artist. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> Matt knows this stuff. Yeah, I, I know my stuff. And so the uh, airplane crashes into the hangar and then it turns into a hangar chase scene. Yeah. And then people are just fucking flying. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is when John Woo just like everyone's there like is... moving in horizontal, like flying through the air, double guns, guns akimbo. There is no continuity within the set here. <laughs> no, I, I was trying to like watch, you know, using my production designer eye to get like a sense to, of the set design and see if there was anything. Cause you know, set designers like to hide things in the set. Yeah. You know, we're, we're real big fans of Easter eggs. Yes. This set is just noise. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> this set was built just to be noise. Yes. Yeah, like a maze, kind of. Yeah, like, there is no... When you're watching it, 
there's like no sense of like like you lose your sense of like geography yes very quickly of it you don't know where things are happening and you could tell it's on purpose Mm -hmm. like a lot of films disorienting right a lot of films end up doing that but it's because they don't have a logic to their set you could tell they're doing it on purpose here yes they are purposely disorienting you (laughs) by just having this set that is just nothing but white noise it's, to just fill up the it's screen crates and metal pillars and like it, random airplane parts <laughs> yes and then there's dudes flying between them we're jumping over the 180 line all the time just just to catch yeah. all the different action of this yeah it's intentionally disorienting um like seven fbi agents die um but they capture pollux and uh caster runs deeper into the hangar with Sean Archer chasing behind. Yes. And they're both shooting guns akimbo at each other. And no one's yeah. hitting anything. Yeah. Uh, uh, till eventually, um, like, a turbine engine yes. turns on. Um, Sean and Caster are fighting in a set, in a way that we're like, Caster gets in the way of the turbine engine turning on. And it blasts him back. <laughs> he gets blasted, like, into, 100 feet like a, into a metal, into like, sheet. Into a metal sheet. And isn't like disintegrated yes he's fine <laughs> I mean, they but he apply- hits his head and goes into a coma <laughs> there's your realism right yeah so there's your realism jeff caster then, troy gets caught yeah um one of the agents uh sean archer's best friend um what's his name they lost a lot of agents that day i, I did tito his friend's tito yeah um, are you tired Stuart? a little bit um, but he, he, he it's like Elvis has left the building, <laughs> uh, and they take a uh, uh, Caster's body. Yeah, and, and then, John Travolta or Sean Archer then walks into the FBI office, and they're all clapping yeah. for him, and rightfully so. I actually kind of like this scene because yeah. he's sort of like not. Yeah, he's not into it. He's not into it. He's like, my son died. I, I wasted like seven years of my life chasing this man, and we lost like eight agents today. Yeah. Like, and he's like. Someone's like, the CIA sent you this bottle of champagne, and he's like, send it back. And he's like, no, wait, pour this one out for those agents yeah. who died. And he lists them all. And it's like, oh, good guy, Sean. Yeah, and he's like, I'm leaving active duty now. Yeah. Because I'm compromising my family. And then... Yeah, he goes back home to his family. Uh, his wife, played by Joan Allen. Yep. Insanely overqualified for this role. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> I am uh, extremely into movies when extremely overqualified like actors or actresses play like small so it's like not just small but the wife role yeah just like the wife or husband role most often the wife role um because hollywood's a little sexist hollywood is broken yes hollywood is broken, broken. as you do jeff yeah um but yeah she's insanely overqualified for this role and she plays it extremely well yeah um, he has a daughter, Jamie. Jamie. Who is not Jamie Lynn Spears, although she looks like Jamie Lynn Spears from yeah. 1997. A little bit. Um, but she is uh, Dominic Swan from, um, what's the thing called? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, but she, um, yeah, his his family's a little broken as well. Yeah. Uh, his wife and him are distant just because he spent all his time trying to find Caster um, after the loss of their son. The daughter is um, rebelling against her family. She, like, dresses very goth. She smokes a lot. Um, is into, like, alternative music uh, just to rebel against her parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, like, he grabs his wife and he's, like, we got him. And they hug and he's, like, I'm done with active duty. I'm going to commit all my time to my family now. Right. Cut to? Next day. Who comes in the office? Uh, CCH Pounder. Um, playing the quarter pounder <laughs> <laughs> with cheese. Uh, no, that's that's plain her, large meal. That's her diet name. Coke. <laughs> her, her full name is like uh, it's Carol Christine uh, Hilaria Pounder, but she goes by Play, CCH playing pounder. Hollis Miller. Yes, Hollis was <laughs> like that. That's her name. Yes, it is her name in this movie. Who is like a his boss it's never explained what her like, role in the <laughs> yeah. agency is. yeah not she really. just shows him she's like archer we got a new mission for you and then she enters well, the face on the machine and then she dies she she brings up that pollux had on him the like schematic for a bomb yes yeah that could take out like a square, a square mile. mile 
and she's like, here's of LA. And she's like, here's how we're gonna do. It. Here's how we're gonna play this. You're gonna have skin transformation therapy. Oh yeah. She just drops. I, I this love is how the she, first attempt. This is the first attempt. Yeah. They don't even talk about questioning anybody. Yeah. They're just like, so uh, here's how we're they, gonna. They they do bring up that like Pollock said that he'll talk if Caster is there. Uh, if Caster is there, because mm-hmm. Pollux at this point doesn't know that Caster Troy is dead. Yeah. And so they're like, here's how we're gonna play it. You're gonna undergo surgery. We're gonna swap your face and your entire body shape with Caster. Yeah. You will then go into the room with him and say, Hey, you can say talk. we're gonna get rid of those love handles. Yeah. <laughs> get rid of those love handles. We're gonna recede your hairline. <laughs> it's like how can we make John Troll? Also up? so when they're explaining the surgery, jumping a little bit, I guess, they they talk about adding to Travolta's like facial structure to create like a Nicolas Cage face. Yes. Yeah. But Nicolas Cage's face is smaller than John Travolta's <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah, because they say like we're gonna put this like mask on that's gonna have like the bone structure of Nicolas Cage. I'm like, wouldn't it just be like a Nick Cage plus Travolta skull? <laughs> like, right. It would be so much bigger than tra- than Nick Cage's actual be face. Normally large. Like Nick especially Cage in like the chin. Yeah. Because like Nick Cage's chin comes down to more of a point. Yeah. Than Travolta's, which is more square. You would have to shave bone off. <laughs> Or have like a comical like crimson chin <laughs> style like chin. And they say like the only thing that won't match is your blood type. Yes. Which means I guess they're swapping fingertips as well. Yes. Like fingerprints. Fingerprints. I guess, like yeah. they're gonna have each other's fingerprints yeah. and all that. And like the same eyes yeah. and like Well no, they say that the, his eyes won't match up because perfectly because they have slightly different colored eyes. But they do say they have similar enough eyes that it won't be noticeable. Yeah, that and no one would notice. Teeth? And similar enough like I think they're keeping the build. Teeth. It's just the skin. So like dental scans, like yeah. dental frames, they could they could I, match. I think their hope is that they won't have to go that far with this deception. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, wait, which one's which? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um but immediately Travolta's just like no oh, no no like, <laughs> what the what? fuck richard <laughs> he's like why would i do that why would i do that um he's like i'll just interrogate them. i'll just interrogate them and get it out of them so he interrogates all of caster's old like stomping goons nobody's talking uh, he talks to sasha who's played by gina gershon and uh, her brother uh, dietrich who's played by Nick, Nick Cassavetes. Cassavetes, the director of Jeff What Film. She's so lovely. Yeah, that's right, the director of the film we covered last week. It's uh, by the ep- ta- date we are recording this, it'll come out a week ago. Or it's coming. No, the date we are recording this. Oh, it's this. coming out tomorrow night. Two, two days. Tuesday. Yeah, tomorrow night, Tuesday morning. Yeah. When does this come out? I'm so, uh, In a sorry, week, I just a, thought a, about it. Uh, not this upcoming, not tomorrow, but the Monday night following. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you folks just got a little scoop about when we're recording this. Yeah, we're recording this on um, August 8th. Yes. It'll come out um, not August 10th, but August 17th. Yes. Tuesday at midnight. I can't wait till like, pre-recording these, like, bites you guys in the ass somehow. <laughs> we're in one of the episodes, we're like, ah, oh, yeah, isn't it great to have this actor in the movie? And then they have, like, allegations against them. In the oh, movie. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk like, about how a movie gets canceled, and yeah. we just like gave it so much praise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or like, what if what if Nick Cage dies between now and the airing of this episode? And we're just like, oh, this fucking guy. I mean, we're I'm we're, giving we're him giving nothing him, but compliments. Him I'm giving him nothing. I mean, no, compl- he's he's great, but <laughs> it's it's one of those things yeah. where well, uh, you know, Matt, we will say when we did the Pulp Fiction episode, yeah, we released it, and I shit you not. Was it the same day or the day later? Joe Rogan had an interview with Quentin Tarantino where he said not so flattering things about uh, Bruce Lee's daughter. Bruce Lee's daughter. And Bruce Lee. Yep. And Bruce Lee. And it got a little bit of traction and fire. And we had literally just released our Pulp Fiction episode <laughs> where we had praised the genius of Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> so we've kind of tripped over some of these landmines before. Yes. Um we haven't been canceled yet. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying our best. We're trying our best here. We have talked a lot about Scientology. Yes. They're coming for us. That that, that might bite us in the ass. Oh, there's, there's, that might bite, a, that might bite there's me a, in the there's ass. There's a Scientology yeah. building like down the street from my new apartment. Yeah, they're, well, they're, they're coming for you. <laughs> Sorry to let you know. 
Yeah. They heard you're on this podcast. <laughs> Mm. Twice now, so you're really marked. Just wait yeah. until John Travolta is in in a Mission Impossible film. Ah, oh, yes, it's got to happen. He should play the Alec Baldwin part in the next one, the 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 secretary. Yeah, I, I think it kind of rules that every Mission Impossible movie has had a different secretary. <laughs> like it's a different guy in every single movie except for the one where Alec Baldwin came back. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, he uh, interrogates all the crew, and no yes. one's talking. Yeah. Uh, he, Sasha, um, he threatens like uh, he's like, take I'll, take, I'll take your away. child away. Yeah, and she's like, I'll tell you, I don't know anything. I haven't seen uh, Caster in five years. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. Um, and then Dietrich, Dietrich, um, it's like I all I know is something about the eighth. They um, they have a date or the eighteenth. Yeah, they have yeah, a, they he, have a he date. He knows he has a date. Yeah, but they don't have the info about where or when or like what time. Yeah, just the eight, just yeah. the 18th. So they go back to Ar- so Archer's like fine, I'll do the face off thing. <laughs> yeah, he eventually then concedes like, to do it. it. Yeah. It's like only only like the the woman, uh the uh, the FBI guy and the doctor. Those three yeah. people are the only ones who are going to know about this yes. search. Like which is so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just back up for a second here. Uh, he can't tell his family. Uh, nobody Which, else in the agency knows. From my understanding, like, that, that's a thing in the FBI. Yeah, you're like, going deep undercover. Like you're, You don't you, tell your... Like, that makes sense. Yeah. But only three people know about this and like there's a very easily disposable paper trail (laughs) (laughs) that one douse of gasoline could just wipe all that away you think you think like they bring it up as like a black ops operation like like, listen no one can know we we work in the film industry where like we are paranoid about keeping two of the same hard drives in the same space in case the building catches fire and you lose an entire fucking movie these motherfuckers are like they're just three of us. <laughs> we all work together very closely. It'd yes. be really easy to find all three of us at one yes. spot. There are YouTube channels that have higher like data <laughs> data conservation than, than this fucking <laughs> this yeah. plan. Yeah. So uh they they do the procedure, which yes. that goes again to the SFX element of it. Yes. That just the incision marks and like the skin flaps yeah. and like the makeup where you see them without a face. You never really see it. You never see it. On. No, they purpose. Yeah. Because it's very blurry. You could tell that they, they did do the makeup and that's going to make their face look a lot swollen. Cause you can, and with makeup, you can only add. Yeah. You can't right. take away. You can't subtract yeah. with makeup. So they're having to build like all this tissue and muscle on top of their face already. Yeah. So it's like which it I, makes sense to be like we'll show it in like blurry shots. Yes, which and I heard that like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nick Cage got grossed out by the, the prosthetic he on. that he put on his face that he didn't ever want to see it. So like they had to remove reflective surfaces. Yeah, from the they set had to so remove reflective surfaces. Like, There's do you have an onset painter on PD? Yeah, and like that gets called in for usually one thing and one thing only, and that's yeah. to like dull down reflective surfaces. Yeah, uh, we we have an onset. Uh, I, well, you have an onset painter on Ripple yes. Effect, I believe. Yes. Uh, Sam is her name. Yeah. And you've told me, Stuart, that yes. she gets called a lot to just dull down reflective surfaces. Yes. Oh, yeah, I mean, dulling spray is great for that. And <laughs> I just I just wonder and think about the onset set painter on this show where it's like on this oh, one God. scene, it's like <laughs> we need you to dull down every single reflective surface in a fucking surgical operation room <laughs> every, where everything's supposed to look clean and sanitized and very bright and shiny. What's, what's probably saving them though with this is I would imagine that Nick Cage like said that during like a test shoot mm-hmm. and not on set the day. Oh of. yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't want to see this. So like, I, I, I mean. To be fair, it, they could have not have ever tested the makeup beforehand, uh, <laughs> which would be really stupid of them. I mean, they probably did, and you're probably right. Like the set, the art department set dressers probably like did this in advance, where they made a room right. where it wasn't reflective. But it's still, <laughs> yeah. There's still the chance that they didn't test it. <laughs> yeah. So, like doing test shoots, you always forget something. Mm-hmm. And it's they, very possible. And Nick Cage gets the set. He's just like, yeah, I don't want to see this. <laughs> I don't want to see this at all. 
All right, uh, Sam Payne, can you come to set? Yeah, but they they do <laughs> they do the they do the face off. They do the face off. They do the face off. Do the face and, off. and here is here is so they they take off. John Travolta's face and put it in like some kind of liquid. <laughs> hey, hey <laughs> Matt, just uh, just uh, talk close to the mic. Sorry. Oh, little... sorry. Sorry hey, about good. that. I I moved away. Uh, so they they take off John Travolta's face and put it in some kind of liquid. Yeah. And this is the one part where I think they might be doing VFX rather than SFX. Yes, when there's like. The f- the actual like face lift is floating in water. Yeah, that to me screams like they did like a uh, like texture mapping and just like that. That cer- there's a, there's some moments of it where you can tell it's like a little bit of CG. But yeah, it's it's the best kind of CG where it's augmenting what's already there rather yeah. than just right. doing it all. Yeah, well they they have to in that time period. It's like unless you want a fucking Scorpion King, Dwayne and Rock Johnson, <laughs> <laughs> or Matrix Reloaded. Um, but yeah, no, no. you yeah you have to do these things practically. You can't yeah, you can't get away with doing these things in CG. A lot of these effects would be really easy today. Yeah, uh, and that's what makes a lot of these movies from the '90s and '80s feel special. Is that yeah. it would just be CG now, but you could tell a lot of and not to discredit the work of VFX artists whose work is still astonishing. But you can tell there's a lot of handcraft that went into yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. With VFX, at least as realistic as they are now, you still have a lack of tangibility a lot of yeah. times. You need something to ground them. Yeah. And that's why doing something like as simple as like a texture map of John Travolta's face floating in water where everything else of the scene is real and you're just using that to augment, it works. Yeah. It's the Jurassic Park thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, the, you know? the CG dinosaurs and that look so good because so much because of the other the, dinosaur stuff is real and the world around them is real. It yeah. establishes it in your head to where it, like, it, 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 it helps you, like, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, suspension of disbelief. Yes, it helps your suspension of disbelief when some of it is at least tangible Mm -hmm. it's why even now when they do stuff on like um the volume space yeah which is where they have like the uh mandalorian this the 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 giant screens or in like a in like a circle like they shot the mandalorian there a lot of the sets are still partially built Mm -hmm. because you need tangibility you need depth you need depth and you need something for the interaction has to be there Mm -hmm. you know and they do a really good job in this as you know primitive as as visual as visual effects are at this point they do a really good job of using it in just sly little ways to just add to the sfx really well and it and it sells in that so much i can't really tell which parts are cg and which parts are real yeah i can't because of what you say it just it augments in such a beautiful way yeah and like the only reason why i could like tell that specific thing as maybe being cg is that to do that would and have it look that real would be really expensive and even at the time that effect would have been pretty easy to do yeah so um like it makes it would have made sense at the time to make that effect be cg Mm -hmm. but there's like nothing else that they have here that really would make sense to be cg so it's like you know this scene just in so many ways is very impressive. Yes. Yeah. And it and it has all the John Woo flourishes you know we love, like quick cuts and slow mo. My one thing Yes that I have to ask, Stu. What fucking year is it in this world? Uh nineteen ninety six. Is I, it I or nineteen nineteen ninety seven? I think it does take place in 97. So they have beepers. Because his, his son's grave says 1991, and it's established he That's, died six yeah, years Yeah, and prior. it's six years forward. So in 1997, they had... The face-off machine. The face-off procedure. They also had the, the futuristic prison with the boots. Yes. Like it's Black Ops operations. We wouldn't know about it. And it all gets destroyed, so <laughs> that's why it's so listening. So, so yeah, this movie's based in real events. That's like my thing. It's I'm just like this is like 1997, like technology, and which is like it, it'd be it'd be 
one thing if like it was just a procedure that we're like suspending disbelief like okay maybe there's like a secret hey. procedure that we just didn't know about in the hey, 90s Jeff. what what time are we at we're at an hour and 20 minutes <laughs> they literally haven't even gotten to the face so far of this movie this is good. I'm prepared. We're maybe 40 minutes, 30 minutes into the movie. Uh, I would be bold to say 25, 30. This is going to be a three-hour podcast. Uh, but it's going to be fucking Oh, that's hours. great. I have, to, I have the time. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> so they do the face-off. They do the face-off. And uh, Sean Archer wakes up. In the body of Caster Troy. In the body of he Caster Troy. He stole the voice of Sean Archer. He does. And he's immediately just like... Freaking ah. out because he looks that in the mirror dub, and sees that lip dub was so good. Yeah, it's really well timed. It's r- really well done. Um, yep. I don't know if does anyone know if they did the the lines as ADR or if they'd like. I'm sure did it had the to lines be, yeah. and yeah. had Nick Cage mouth to the lines. No, it had to be ADR. Yeah, I would like, assume they were. Pro- it was probably like Nick Cage delivering the lines on set. Um. And then they just like dubbed it. Had Travolta like yeah, yeah. match it, match it in post. It, they, it is said that they uh, they spent two weeks prior to this movie uh, studying just together, each other, yeah. just together studying each other, so that they could get this yeah so well. Each other's like patterns of speaking and ways of walking. Yeah, because they do really sell the transformation. The two of them. oh, it's really so good. Do. Yeah, Nick Cage, especially the Nick Nick Cage as as uh sean archer sean archer as caster troy <laughs> like yes. his mannerisms immediately like shift shift the way that he speaks once they they fix his voice to, to sound like that of, of of caster troy his like diction and like it, it just matches what john travolta had been doing the whole time so mm. well it feels like a, a continuation of the same character rather than a new actor playing a yeah, role. Yeah, right. Which is a really hard thing to pull off. Absolutely. Like, even when movies cast younger versions of the same character, right. I can oftentimes have difficulty trying to, like, reconcile those versions. Because it just seems like it's it's not the younger yeah. version of a character. It's a younger actor playing that. It's a different that, actor, yeah. yeah. Playing that character. Like, one... The few times it's ever really worked for me was like Hugh McGregor's young Obi Wan Kenobi. That feels like a continuation of the Alec Guinness role. I would say um, Moonlight does it pretty well. Moonlight does it very well. Yeah, Moonlight, I, and I think that's mostly on Barry Jenkins and not so much. With all much respect to the three actors, I think it was like the directing because it's really like these small um, muscle memory. Yeah. tweaks that the characters carry over from each mm-hmm. of the di- like with moonlight it's split it into three different acts yeah. sections of the movie that have different actors playing age roles and there's like certain quirks about the this character that gets repeated mm-hmm. over all the all of those these parts that i think was something that was added uh through the directing yeah um to maintain that uh smooth transition point um, cause otherwise it kind of, it almost would have felt like it were just three different actors playing mm-hmm. the same character, but it really feels like it's yeah. the same character just getting older. But, and ex- but in face off, it feels like it's a Nick Cage thing. Yes. Yeah. Like it, it obviously like- John, John Woo as a director has a part in it, you know, a, a director has a part in the performance, but it does really feel like it is Nick Cage just acting his ass off. <laughs> yeah. He's very committed in what he's doing in this movie. Yeah, he is. And um, so they give him a transmitter that makes him sound like uh, Caster, Caster Troy. Troy. And so it's just full Nick Cage at this point. It's full Nick Cage. But like we just said, he's really selling the yeah. John Travolta of it all. So then... Uh, they ship him off to prison. They ship him off to uh, the Nowhere prison. Yes. Which is another Avengers uh, yeah. thing. It's like a, an oil refinery. <laughs> With yeah, the prison built under the ocean with these magnetic metal boots yes. that they just turn on and your feet are stuck to the floor. Yes. Like how many ankles break in this <laughs> fucking prison? Because <laughs> you're just walking and all of a sudden you can't lift up your feet. But a uh, John Carroll Lynch is the uh, yeah the like head the Zodiac guard. killer himself. The Zodiac killer himself. Um, I love that man. Uh, he just comes out and he's like, 
this is a black ops prison. <laughs> he just like gives this whole speech. He's like, this is a black ops prison. The Geneva Conventions do not apply here. <laughs> the international laws of Amnesty Which do not apply here. Amnesty does kind of feel... Sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Amnesty International does not have jurisdiction. <laughs> it kind of feels like they're they're trying to like poke at like Guantanamo yeah, Bay a little bit. a parody bit. of Guantanamo. Uh, except it's, this is like super villain prison. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and he gets dropped off by his like FBI friends and they're like we're the only people who know we'll pull you out as soon as you get the info yep we'll pull you they, out they in like, you have two days yeah, yeah two days they're gonna pull you out in two days and so he's in prison um where he he finds pollock's troy but immediately pollock's hey, kind of hey jeff who's that um that's my girlfriend becca oh, okay. who do uh, you think it was Stuart? Uh, my i wasn't sure if your roommate came back uh jack but anyway um no jack is still on vacation okay, he's still on vacation i think we might have another phone call with him later <laughs> to talk about some some other stuff about this movie but for now it's just uh becca okay so yeah um we've been dating for a while yeah you guys have a really nice relationship i really we do yeah we do real yeah. cute yeah. yeah thanks nah uh, steward over here myself still ha- uh, you know <laughs> happily single happily yeah Fucking lonely doofus. <laughs> wait, ah! so, we didn't insult me like that. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, the, uh, Archer almost immediately just like gets the job done. <laughs> yeah, well, like he he starts a fight in prison, and he's like, well, yeah. he doesn't start the fight. Someone starts the fight, he, with but him. he like goes he into the, he finishes the fight, and he's like, I'm Caster Troy. Yeah, I'm Caster Troy. Like he's really getting yeah. into it, and it's just. And that's what sells Pollock's that it is the real Caster Troy. Right. Because mm-hmm. he, he's not sold immediately. He's, it's established that Pollock's is very skeptical yeah. and paranoid. And uh, he's not really selling him until that moment when he embraces the crazy. Yeah, right. And s- meanwhile, yes. back uh, at the who hospital. Who wakes up? Caster, Caster Troy. Troy. Uh, <laughs> uh, and with he has, no face. With, with literally no face. He, his face is all bandaged up. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, I don't like this. This well, is well, uncomfortable. Well, what happens is, like, he stumbles to the hospital. You see him, like, behind a, a sheet of glass looking at the jar with Travolta's yeah. face on it. And he, you, you see a bloody hand go up to the glass. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because So there's this moment where, like, when he wakes up, he, like, immediately, like, sits up on, like, the hospital bed. Yeah. And then, like, removes the bandages around his face and then touches his face. And there's just blood on his hand yeah. because it's he, all he doesn't have and a tissue. face. Right. And he just starts moaning, Wailing. like, in pain the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so then he's sitting in this, like, chair watching the procedure happen. Yeah, and he, on call, TV. and he calls his boys. Yeah, he calls his boys. He's like, and, they fucking switched my face, man. <laughs> and, they fucking switched my and face. They bring the doctor. Yeah, they uh, find the doctor they, really they, easily. They bring the doctor and the two FBI people who know about this. Yep, to the lab. Um, as well as all the paperwork about. This. As well as all the paperwork about this procedure. Yep, they bring them all, and then we're back to the prison. They're back to the prison, and uh, uh, Archer, who's in the body of Troy, um. Is talking to Pollux. And he's like, Yeah, the bombs at the uh, LA, Convention LA Convention Center. <laughs> and he's like, Thanks. And then, <laughs> and then the guard, and then the John Carroll Lynch goes there. He's like, You have a visitor. And he's like, All pompous. He's and like, like, Oh, hell yeah. The I FBI know what this is. They're getting me out. I got my key. The big metal door <laughs> pulls aside. And who's who walks there? in, Jeff? Or jo- Stuart? Uh, yeah. Who walks in, Stuart? Um, John Travolta. John Travolta. As Caster Troy. As Caster Troy. Um and Travolta from this point on oh my God. is insane. <laughs> I like, fucking love it. He is he does a very different breed of crazy than Nick Cage. Here's the but thing. it is so magical. Nick Cage is like trying and committing and putting effort. Travolta's just having fun. Yes. He's literally just having fun. He's having a great time. He's having the time of his life just being the crazy. And he's just like, oh, you weren't expecting me? <laughs> you, oh, you weren't expecting me? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, look at this little turn of events. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. just like, it's not so much that he is 
doing a good caster Troy as it is. It's like he's just like losing his mind. He's just evil, yes. a crazy evil version of Sean Archer. Yes. Uh, he's just having a really good time. You can tell he's having a good time, but it it does still read as like maniacally evil. Yeah. Because uh, th- there's a read on this movie that it's you know about confronting the demon in yourself. Yeah. And defeating them. Right. Um, and he's literally meeting like the evil version of himself that he has to vanquish so he can become whole again and uh, finally uh, be a part of his family. Yeah. Um, and that's the kind of this, the play of this scene. Um, <laughs> but Tra- Tra- Cast- Travolta Caster Troy um, is just like, yeah, guess what I did? I swapped the face. And then I burned the three people who knew about it alive. So nobody knows that we swapped bodies. And, and he literally you're gonna... hands him a newspaper with an article about the destruction of this lab and all the evidence. Yep. And so he's stuck in this prison for the next 100 years. <laughs> yes. He's like, you'll be getting out in 100 years. And I'm going home to fuck your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and, and Nick Cage who's Sean Archer during this entire scene has just got the expression like, what? What? Yeah. What? <laughs> he's putting it together. He's so broken. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my God. I'm trapped in the body of my worst enemy. Yeah. While my worst enemy is in my body living my life. Yes. Screwing my wife mm. and possibly trying to screw my daughter. Yes. It, uh. So, so this is a, a point where I, I'm so do they have does like the prison guards have eyes in because then Nick Cage attacks John Travolta and a guard runs in and zaps and a guard like, runs in and like breaks it up. I assume they just heard all the commotion because he literally just yells like die yeah. and he's because like oh sorry sir and he's like oh it's no worries he's he's crazy it's like if 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 any of the guards there have eyes and ears on that, they're like, Oh cool. We know. We <laughs> also <scheme>. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so like, these guards are a little corrupt. I like what, uh, T- Castor Troy then says, it's like, Oh, don't worry. He's probably had a traumatic childhood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like, yep. I love how the digs into his yeah. dead son. <laughs> no, he's, he's even like, uh, well, he's describing himself as well. Yeah. Cause Caster Travolta Caster Troy is talking about actual Caster Troy. And it's very confusing to describe this movie. <laughs> um, yeah. But he's just like, uh, oh, don't hit him too hard. He probably had a traumatic childhood. Uh, turned out this evil. Yeah. Oh, one line that we missed. Sorry. I, 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 I want to backtrack one second for a line. The guards break up the fight earlier with him and an inmate. And. And with just the smuggest look on his face, Nick Cage is like, I'm going to have you fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, and then and then all of this happens, and it's like, Nick Cage, you're not going to have him fired. Yeah, you're not getting no. back to that level. So then um, Castro Troy then goes to Archer's house. Yes. And is like living up his life. And he discovers that... Uh, Sean Archer is living with a broken family. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. The next like 20 minutes are kind of him fixing Sean Archer's life. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. <laughs> but like begrudgingly yes. doing it. Like he's, he's like, ah, oh, shit, I can fix this guy's life now. It's like, he's got a messed up daughter. The first... the relationship with his wife is kind of messed up. Like him disarming the bomb is almost an afterthought to him <laughs> fixing his arch enemy's life. Yeah. Cause so he fixes, he disarms the bomb. He gets Pollux out. And gets Pollux out because he says he gave info yeah. about the bomb. And so he disarms the bomb to make himself to look like a hero. Yeah. Um, he gets his own detail in the FBI. Yeah. And um, all this all this to be said. Yeah. Archer or Caster Troy and Archer's body is being made to be the hero. Yeah. Um, he's still back out in the field. His yeah. wife isn't happy about that. Um, all this to be said. So then Troy uh, or Archer has to escape from prison. Yes. And how does he do it? He, uh, so he discovers the only place where they remove your boots is, is when if they're they going to give you, you electroshock therapy. Electroshock therapy. <laughs> so he assaults a guard and then says, Hey, I'm out of smokes and grabs the guard's cigarette and fights him. And then he gets carried off to electroshock therapy. 
all the while asking, anyone got a light? <laughs> anyone got a light? The way uh, he escapes from this prison is just like, really? Yeah. And he, he, he brought into the electroshock room and finds the guy who had assaulted him the day before. And in he's, the chair getting, being zapped. Oh, he's getting zapped. Uh, he, he swaps out with him. He has his boots removed. And then he's like talking to the guy. And he's like, I never did. Because the guy attacked him because he slept with his wife and his sister at the same time. Yeah. Um, as uh, Pollock says, you made a sex sandwich with them. Um, but he uh, he is like, I never slept with your daughter. When we're get out, you can see them again. And the guy wakes up and just starts wailing on the guards. And they team up. <laughs> they team up. Um, it's all things considered a fairly simple <laughs> escape. Yeah, it really is. They just run up to the uh, the guard room, shooting people on the way. Um, and like so- overload the circuits. And Sean Archer has, like, some trepidations about, like, because he's shooting guards. Yes. He's fully, like, embracing. But he doesn't shoot any of the unarmed ones. Right. And he stops the one inmate from, like, killing some of the other guards um, who are unarmed. And um, so, yeah, they overload the circuits. Um, He gets he gets up to the surface. Yes. Finds and out. And then a helicopter attacks. And a helicopter attacks. He him. discovers it in the middle of the ocean. He's like, no, no. <laughs> he screams. No. Um, yeah, literally. Out also, the- sorry. Uh, another set that is just noise. Yeah. It's all, it's all just gray. <laughs> <laughs> um, he jumps into the ocean and swims away. Yeah. And then we're in the FBI office where the FBI agents come up to Castro Troy and they're like, sir, like, Castor Troy is dead. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, where's his body? It's like his body. We don't have a body. We don't have the body. He's like, well, he's, like, he's in LA well, right now. Well, I love John Travolta, his, his performance here. That's like, they haven't discovered the body yet? <laughs> 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 Literally just goes from zero to 200. Yeah. And, he, and they're like, well, he's not stupid enough to come back here. And he's like, well, if I know him, he's already here. He's already here. And then we cut to him already here. <laughs> already here. <laughs> And he steals stealing, a car. Stealing a car. He like goes up to like a random place to the valet stand and steals the keys of a random car. <laughs> it's like, is the valet not there? I guess not. It was that was a little bit easy. And then he gets don't, a car. Don't trust your cars with fucking valets. Not yeah. in LA in the nineties. And he zips off. Um where does he go first? He breaks into his No, he goes to the uh he like drives past his house and there's like cops. Yeah. Oh, and he re- so he realizes he can't get in his house. Yeah. Um, and so then he goes to like meet with like Caster's associates. Yeah. So he goes to meet with Gina Gershon and Nick Cassavetes. We and we missed one bit where um, Travolta Troy is driving to his house and he misses it and he yes. like stops and because like his wife's standing out front and he like. Reverses. Like, reverses the brakes like, so she's you like forget where you live now yeah and he's like oh, you know all the houses around here look the same and he's like i gotta get going and it's like well where are you going like you gotta come with me to this thing and like he doesn't know what thing he's talking and about he's like, i don't like, wanna what do you mean like i gotta go do something he's like i know it's hard for you but you have to come <laughs> cut to His son's cemetery great. he's at sean archer's grave or like michael archer's. michael archer's grave visiting literally his victims <laughs> the person he murdered grave and it's like it's a little moment like this where it's they don't there's no dialogue for yeah. castor troy so you don't know totally what he's thinking it could be like this is just pathetic like yeah. why am i doing this or it could be like oh fuck yeah because <laughs> i started watching um the tv show barry great um, show from hbo and there was there was a scene in barry where like this is after he like killed somebody yes and it was like the acting buddies and they go to like this memorial service and he barry sees like his dad weep for him in the service and he like runs out and says i never see that he's like what it's like that like the the morning that comes yeah. after killing somebody and i just kind of drew parallels to this a little bit where yeah. it's like you know Caster Troy has to like see the consequences of that... his actions and he's um, unmoved and he's unmoved. Yeah. Or is he? Or is he? He seems like at some moments to be slightly kind of getting in the hang of being living the square life. Yeah. But never fully committing. Right. Especially when he's fixing it. Like, yeah, <laughs> he well, like he there's this moment. I don't remember when it happens. <laughs> if it's like if 
further along than we are or not in describing the movie, mm. but uh, Sean Archer's daughter is like about to get like assaulted by the guy she was she, seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and John Travolta. So this is Caster Troy as Sean Archer comes out and just beats the shit <laughs> out, of, out of this guy. <laughs> it's like, what would have Sean Archer had done differently? Yeah. Because he's still an FBI agent. Even though he's a good right. guy FBI agent, he's still a dad mm-hmm. and he's still a cop. So it's... Caster Troy, Sean Archer is giving the tough love yeah. that his but daughter what, needs. What... He actually really bonds with the daughter. In a weird In a, way. Sense. In a weird, sick way, yes. kind of. <laughs> Because he also like, like pervs on on his dog. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a it's a weird paradox with this one. Yes. Because um, he starts uh, he like starts sharing cigarettes with her because he doesn't have any in the house. Well, his first interaction is he walks in in her bedroom and she's in her underwear. Yeah. And he's staring. And he's and, quite... and she's like talking to someone about something. I forget the exact line, but it had something to do with sex. Yeah. And she's like, Dad, and go like, away. And she closes the door and he like holds the door open. Yeah. And just gets really uncomfortably close yes. to her. He like whispers under his breath too. He's like, now that's more like it. <laughs> like re- referencing his like uh Sean Archer's wife as yeah. being like, This is better than his wife. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. So we're back with uh Sean Archer and uh, Castro Troy's body with his old gang. Yes, and he immediately gets really high. Yes, uh, with his with his old with gang. Nat Castaways and Gina Gershon. And this is when I, we get the best line in the entire movie, besides the peaches line. It's um, like I I want to take. Like hey, Arch, hey, hey, Troy, what do you want to do? What What do you want to do now? It's like I want Sean Archer, and he's like, What do you want to do with Sean Archer? It's like I want to take his face. Oh. oh. Roll credits. <laughs> I want to take his face off. And he does this like hand gesture with it yeah. every time. And he's like, and, and they start mimicking him about yeah. it. It's like, so what do you want to take his face off? <laughs> what does that mean? So, and then they're like, no more drugs for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy gets no more drugs. Yeah. Uh, um, they then he wakes up the next morning. Well, he ha- he goes to the bathroom. Yes, and he has like a panic attack. Yes, because he like sees he his sees face. himself in the mirror. Yeah, and he does like the Nicolas Cage wide eye yeah, move, and then his uh, girlfriend or whoever his uh, so tra- Caster Troy's ex girlfriend Sasha walks in. Walks in. And he to, like has like the creepy stare yeah. still going on, and she has her son, who Sean Archer had earlier threatened to remove from her, and they start chatting, um, and it's revealed that the kid is Caster Troy's son, right? Um, and he's the same age that Michael was when he died. Yeah, and so I have issues with this. Uh, at the end Cat- of the movie. Archer is a <laughs> little. Um, high Mikey. still and he's just like Mikey. Mikey and he starts like stroking Mikey. the kid's face and it's a and little she's weird. like this is a little creepy it's a little weird um but and, you know and then the fbi raid it yeah and then the fbi show up and they yeah. just start shooting all over the place and you see sean or caster troy as sean archer on the opposite rooftop just hooting and hollering having a great time he's like whoa we're taking him down <laughs> he's having a great time with this raid yeah um it's very funny um, so it, it comes down to the point, like there, a lot of Castro Troy's old gang members are getting shot yeah, they're getting, and killed. A lot of FBI is, agents are getting shot and killed. This scene has, beats the first one for the amount of people flying all over the place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody is horizontal midair guns akimbo in this. Yes. Nobody is, is gr- on the ground. A lot of doves. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, that's the end scene. Where there's that a lot is of, the end scene. Um, but there's a lot of just craziness happening. This is the mirror fight, right? Yes. This ends with yes. the mirror fight. This Which is the... was, honestly, that was really good. <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah. Um, but there's just a lot of craziness going on. Um, to describe uh, the mirror fight. <laughs> yes. So so fin- all, uh, fin- everyone dies. <laughs> yeah. It, everyone dies. The only people to escape are Sasha and her son. Um, Nick Cassavetes, director of She's So Lovely, dies. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, <laughs> When does Pollux die? Because doesn't Pollux die in this scene too? After this, yes, oh, he after. does. But um, they're the only two who escape. 
Um, all the FBI and gang guys die. And it ends with a Travolta cage. Mirror fight. On opposite sides of a mirror. Yeah. A two-way mirror, so both sides are reflective. Um, and they're aiming guns at each other. Yeah, and well, the fir- they're just like head-to-head on either sides of the pillar, and they're just chatting about like, you know, that you're not so different, you and I, kind of like conversation. Yeah. Um, And he's like, you know, I fucked your wife and all that kind of stuff. And if they whip around, they do like a slow-mo whip around and are pointing guns at a mirror, the mirror between them, and they're just shooting at themselves. Yeah. Ugh. 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 Jeff, isn't that such a great scene? Well, this is where... um... Oh, it's so great. It's so great. It is really good. Catch me, like, doing the Nick Cage face from the opening of the movie during the scene where I'm just like, oh! Nothing at orgasm. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and uh, so they're they're aiming guns at each other through the mirror, but they're at seeing themselves. their own reflections. Yes. But it's the accurate enemy that they're aiming yes. at. Like it's about Caster defeating Troy your own worst enemy is, is always your technically aiming a gun at his own reflection, but his own reflection is his enemy's yes. body, and vice versa for Caster Troy. Yes, which is it is such a good visual for this movie. Yes, it's such a good visual gag. Yeah. And so they shoot some bullets. They don't hit each other. Yeah. Some of the bullets hit each other. Some of the, bu- <laughs> the bullets rebound. Oh yeah, and 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 but they don't really. They don't get any fatal shots off of mm-hmm. each other, and they they get away from this battle. Yeah, both alive still. Um, but on the roof, they're still kind of shooting at each other. Um, Pollux is kicked through the glass and falls down and dies. Yeah, Pollux dies um, on well, the yeah, roof. Yeah, falls through this like massive like skylight and falls down like three stories <laughs> to the ground and just dies in front of John Travolta. <laughs> He's like, "No! No!" <laughs> and like random FBI agent like comes up and is like, "Why why are you upset? Why are you upset? This is Pollux and Troy." And then he just headshot. turns around and he just shoots him. <laughs> headshot. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 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 what a great Travolta, movie! What a great movie! Travolta Castor Troy kills a lot of his own FBI yes. agents, <laughs> and it's just it's great because it's like he, he, he's trying to like play the role of Sean Archer, but as he Castor also Troy loathes the FBI, but he also has these moments where like the real Castor Troy like yeah, snaps out. out for a little bit and he kills just without any hesitation an yeah. FBI agent or somebody like that. Because um, this also leads to like the next scene. Where they're at the like uh, the headquarters in L.A. Yeah, and John Travolta is like talking to his like higher up, and he's like, "People are getting real nervous up top that there's you so, know so much." And there's like, "There's so many people who died there. This is not acceptable." And then rather than uh, Castro Troy just kills Sean Archer's boss, for yeah, this. he just strangles him uh, in his own Victor office. Victor Lazaro is his name. He's the FBI who's like director. seemingly starting to have a heart attack. <laughs> yes. Like he he, he like motions to his heart a couple of times and is like oh and so uh caster just exacerbates that process and kills him and then he uh call dials on his phone and be like hey stacy lazaro had a heart attack in my office send an ambulance right away yeah. <laughs> gets away with it like a fucking champion yeah. and then the next thing is um archer go sneaks in his house he sneaks in his house and talks to jo- his joan allen wife yeah and is like and she's obviously concerned to see the guy who killed her son in, in her bedroom. Yeah, she's freaking out. And then he explains to her the situation. He's like, here, t- take a sample of our blood. And you'll see I'm O, ne- I'm o negative, but he's AB. Yeah. Um, no and, other way to do that. And this. so she does that. She does that. Uh, what time? You keep looking at the... Jeff, you keep looking at the thing. Um. Well, Stu, we're about an hour and 50. Okay. So uh, it's uh. not going to be three, I guess. Well, Matt, this is already longer than the Carrie episode. How's that feel? I, I'm aware. It's great. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, There's still so much left. <laughs> There's a lot left of this movie. This is going to be the longest episode of this podcast if I, if my math is right. If you go 35 minutes longer, you'll be the longest episode. Is there a two-hour episode of this podcast? Pulp There's Fiction. A, Pulp Fiction is two hours, 24 minutes, I think. Yeah. Pulp Fiction is our it, longest. I, oh, it is two hours, 25. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, competition. <laughs> um so at any rate yes at any rate she tests the blood and, and it it's is, true and she, she's like oh my god and so the next day she meets with um sean in the nick cage body 
Uh, no, it's literally he's at the hospital. Wait, he's waiting. While she's at the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's like learning at in the, the hospital. He she, she goes in. She like prick. I she knew. pricks John Travolta in his sleep. Goes to the hospital late at night. Tests the blood and and uh, uh, Nick Cage. So this is Sean uh, uh, Archer. Archer as Caster Troy is yes. already there at the hospital waiting. <laughs> and he like he like like you know he's like weasels I, in I, through I, I the. I knew you uh, would come here. I knew you would. would I, you would. I believe knew you me. would trust me. <laughs> Like and he's such a broken a man at this him, point, yeah. and is like, I don't trust anyone right now, which is mm. fair. Yeah. Um, but eventually, I wouldn't trust anyone. But eventually, I don't trust anyone now because of what's happening on this podcast. <laughs> I don't know what's happening on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> well, he uh, eventually she believes him that yes. he's the real uh, Sean Archer, just with a different face. They come up with a plan. Uh, yeah, they say, like, he's going to be the next director, so, like, he's going to be untouchable. It's like, well, not at the funeral. I got to go to the fu- the bureau director's funeral the next day. Um, so then cut to church funeral scene. Um, John Travolta, or Castor Troy and his family. Um, so the, the Jamie does not go. Yes. Um, they make an excuse like she, she stole does, fifty bucks and ran off. Yeah, she's like she doesn't come to our son's grave. She's not going to come to this funeral. They just want to keep her out of it to stay yeah. safe. So they go to the funeral and um, uh, and you Sean, can tell that like Caster Troy as Sean Archer is like, huh? That's odd. Yes. Yeah. He's skeptical. He's already skeptical about it. He's picking up a little bit of his brother's paranoia. So um, they go to the funeral, and so does Sean Archer Cage. Yeah, except he just starts out standing on the beach. And it's like, this is a wide shot of just Nick Cage just standing there staring at the ocean as all these doves fly around. Yes. Not seagulls. Doves. doves. Keep keep that in mind. Yes. Um, So he lights a candle for his son because he takes a photo from his house. Well, first, um, like, the funeral happens. Well, and then, it's during the funeral. He lights a candle for his son because he has a photo, yeah. and then an altar boy delivers that photo to Castor uh, yeah. Troy, John Travolta, who crumples in his hand and realizes his enemy is here. His enemy is here. Um, and then it's post-funeral. Well, yeah, the funeral happens, and there's a lot of choral music. Yes, um, there's a lot of choral music, and uh, it's just it's like three minutes of slow mo Nick Cage walking up to the funeral. Um, as the funeral occurs, it ends. Nick Cage walks up to the altar. He like pays his respects, and then he turns around. And who's there? Castor Troy. Bah, bah, bah. John Travolta. And he's like, "Well, look who it is." Um, they point they point their guns at each other. Yeah. And then Joan Allen comes in, and she's being held hostage. By- by and one of his Trolls was like, yeah, get, uh, your daughter's on the way, too. So now we have a three-way standoff. And then... Uh, Sasha. Gina, Sasha comes in. Sasha Gina Gershon comes, comes in. in and points her guns. Yeah. And, and then, she has a guy with her who also comes in and points guns. Yeah. What, ra- a, what a great standoff. <laughs> and there's like... I think there's like there's another party here who has two guns pointed. I don't even know who it is. Yeah. There's a lot of guns being pointed. And ends up with like six or seven people all pointing two guns at each other. Yeah. Like the craziest ma- standoff ever. And right as Sasha comes in, Travolta has my favorite line delivery in this movie. Where he's just like, Sasha, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> he says it's so funny. <laughs> and he's like, well, what, what's the line he says about the, the standoff? Isn't this a tense situation or something like that? Something like that. Yeah. I don't really know. It's so funny. Um, I'm, I'm really stoned at this point when i'm watching this movie yes. so my notes get a little vague during yeah. this point part um so i just wrote down church standoff gunfight yes and uh everybody but travolta cage and joan allen die yes including sasha yes. Sasha, sasha dies, dies too. and she she's like she takes a bullet for caster troy who she thinks is actual caster troy but it's sean yeah. archer yeah and, and she's Archer's like just take, over her body. take care of my son and, and she dies. dies on top of him it's like take care of our boy yes don't, don't she says don't let him turn out to be like us yes which is an interesting thing for sean archer yes <laughs> to, 
to be said. And then, uh, so there's a little more chasing that goes on. Yeah, the, the, the bite scene continues. And eventually winds up with... Um, Jamie shows up. Jamie shows up and has a gun pointed. Um, Sean Archer, Nick Cage... Is trying to, like... He has Travolta Troy to ready to kill him. Yeah. And Jamie shows up, and she has a gun. And she uh, points it at... And they're both, like, trying to convince her which to shoot at. Yeah. And because she had connected with the Casper Troy to Archer, she, she shoots, shoots at Sean her Archer real dad. Cage. Yeah. Right. In his arm. Yes. And, and like, then Ooh. he starts. And he's like, no he daughter like, of mine would aim so wide. <laughs> and then he like grabs Troy. her and then starts licking her face. Yes. And he's like, peaches. <laughs> 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 he literally says it like that. He's like, he like earlier, so after she got assaulted, he gives her a knife and yes. says, a butterfly ne- knife. Yeah, yeah. It says, next time, you know, old Jimmy tries to do anything to you, stick this in his thigh and twist it so the wound can't close. And so when uh, Castor Troy Travolta is like holding her hostage with a with his gun, um, she he licks her face and says yes. peaches and then she takes the knife stabs, stabs it in him. his thigh and twists it yeah and then he's on the run yeah and she's and then joan allen goes to jamie and jamie says one of the greatest like will someone tell me what planet i'm on <laughs> <laughs> someone tell me what's happening yeah and so now it's just the two of them it's just the two of them chasing and a speedboat chase occurs. and then a speedboat chase yes and they're on two different speedboats and this is where you can see when it cuts to like wider shots that it's totally stuntmen yeah oh yeah and i they don't they don't try because nowadays you would you would cg their face out but yeah. now they here they there are some earlier parts too where they are clearly stuntmen but this is the like the worst offender <laughs> uh, offending scene of that i wanted it to almost be creative where they had like whatever it's like john travolta castor troy and nick cage sean archer yeah. that when they cut to their wides and their stunt doubles they flip the who the stunt doubles would be (laughs) so it'd be instead of sean archer cage and it'd be uh castor troy cage and just to be creative with it because you know you're gonna see the doubles anyway so you might as well be they also they do switch doubles around because obviously some stunt men are can do some things that others can't so when they're doing like a lot of stuff like on the boat the Tron, they're like fighting and you could tell it's different people and then at one point he uh, uh um well he like so, hops on he hops from his speedboat to Travolta's speedboat to Travolta's speedboat and then uh, uh Travolta grabs the anchor and like tries to smash him in the head with it and ends up impaling it into like the front of the boat <laughs> yeah that... and then Nick Cage ends up hanging off of it off the side of the boat just like <laughs> Just like bouncing off the water, skipping. and then yeah. the best thing. And you thing can tell happens. that that's like, that's like a, a a different stuntman, yeah. stuntman yeah. than all the other stuntmen that you've seen so far. And then, and then my, one of the boats crashes into a, a pier and explodes. Well, and my favorite thing happens when Nick Cage is bouncing off the yeah. water because in combination with the music, eventually he gains control and his feet are like skiing on the water. Yeah, and then the music's like. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like he accomplished some fucking feat. <laughs> well, Stuart. I mean Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Yes, yeah, Steve. Jeff Matt. What's up, Stuart? So we've established that this movie is very biblical. <laughs> He's walking on water. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Repeat that again. Uh Matt, did you not hear that? No, I didn't hear that. Oh, so I just told I just told Jeff that um as I said, this movie is very biblical, and as the choir music is swelling at that point, that is when Nick Sean, Cage, Archer, Sean Archer he walks on water. He's literally got his feet. Balanced he literally on walks on water. water. I hate this. I hate this. Too. <laughs> I am, and during that previous church confrontation, there's a period where Travolta is walking right in front of like the crucifix. And he's looking at real Sean Archer as an occasion. He's like, oh, have you come to sacrifice yourself? Come to make the, the big move? And he like makes a mockery of Jesus on the cross. And uh, this, is, this is the sacrifice. He's sacrificing himself by fighting himself. Anyway, so the speedboat chase continues. So the speedboat eventually crashes. Yes. 
Oh, also, well, one, we of them, for- one of them crashes. Well, we forgot. There's there was another, a there's a really car. good there's a really good stunt that happens, <laughs> and that's before <laughs> Nick Cage jumps from his boat onto John Travolta's, yeah. and that is they're like bounce they're like bumper cars, but bumper boating each other, yeah. and eventually Nick Cage's boat goes up a like a yacht well, uh, like no, a well, ramp no it's a coast guard boat oh yeah it's because he pulls boat. out a, a machine gun and she kills all the coast guard and then he aims his boat right at the coast guard boat and he rides it like a ramp and <laughs> and lands on the water and it's still going yeah, it's i flying. mean what the fuck it's the uh the uh too fast too furious stunt where they jump onto the yacht <laughs> yes it was beautiful and so back to when they're on one boat now yes that boat then crap like it hits <laughs> against the boat ramp and they both come flying yes. off in the middle of like 50 feet in the yeah. air at least and they're fi- they're on the beach for their final duel yes so they're fighting yes and uh sean archer cage grabs a spear gun and he like aims it at travolta he's got him pinned up against the wall but when he hits the trigger uh Castro Troy Travolta grabs like the barbs that's like keeping yeah. it, the the spear gun from going. Fucking cool scene. Yeah. And then he says like something like if you're going to take this back, you're going to remember it forever and starts cutting his face up. Yeah. yeah so that maniacally. He can't have his face back. Right. He has to keep his face off. And it, it just starts cutting his face and then he like punches him to where his, he like lets go of the the barb yeah. on the spear gun and, it, and, and the spear gun impales him yeah and he dies and castor troy dies in the john travolta body yeah and then the fbi shows up with joan allen and they're like and he thinks he's gonna get arrested yeah, and they're like sean uh he's like what it's like you're you no know know one sean <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it, what, because we missed a quick bit earlier where it's like as joan allen is like Coming up to their daughter, Jamie, she calls one of the FBI secretaries over yeah. the phone. He's like, you're not going to believe this. You're not but... going to believe this. Flashback. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would have been a great flashback scene. It's like, wait, you know my name? Freeze frame. Yeah. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> and it's just Joan Allen like, okay, so this is what happened here. <laughs> yeah. And then flash forward back to that moment. It's like, so yeah, we now yeah. know you're Sean Archer. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. And so they get both put in an ambulance. Yep. Um, and then he looks over and sees his his dead body. His dead body. And do you know what happens? He gets resurrected. He gets resurrected. He is resurrected like Lazarus. Also a spear. Or like Jesus from the cave. It, Jeff, uh, or yeah. Stu, I'm just going to keep going into this Jesus metaphor with yeah. you. And that is when Jesus was crucified, you know what they did? Yeah. They stabbed him in the side. Yeah. And blood and water came out with yeah. a spear. Yep. How did... How did Castro Troy die with a spear. He died for the sins of humanity. He dies for the sins of humanity and then is resurrected to make a family whole again. By sacrificing his flesh and blood. Yeah, he literally sacrifices his flesh. You picking up what I'm putting down? Jeff? Stu. Yeah. But then, <laughs> yeah. But then, um, but then, he gets, but then he gets all his... the FBI agents are like, "We'll gather the best doctors to like... <laughs> they succeed. <laughs> they succeed. They, they put him back in his body. Yep. And and here's here's my whole thing about this. Is there no patent? <laughs> like, <laughs> like they talk about how they burnt the whole paper trail, <laughs> but like that shit's got to be patented. <laughs> Well, for emergency purposes, I think it's it like, broke the th- this bitch has been through enough. Let's put yeah. his face back on. <laughs> and then the end end of the movie is it's back. He at, walks through the foggiest day in L.A. ever. Yeah, it's uh, back at the, the Sean Archer household. Yeah. Uh, Joan Allen's there. He comes back in his real body. Real body. Uh, ja- Jamie is this. no longer dressed goth. She has pushed away, I guess, the bad side of herself. And who does Sean Archer Travolta have with him? Little Adam. Little they Adam. made their family whole again. Pause. Adam. That was a bit fucked up. Adam. <laughs> a little bit. And Eve. Adam. The beginning of life. St- <laughs> <laughs> I have... So okay, real quick. I have one note that I that I missed from earlier. So this is like significantly earlier in the movie yes. than we are right now. I'm just going to go back because I wanted to say this. I wonder if this is going to be the same thing I wanted to bring up. That I forgot. Well, okay, so first I have a quote, 
and I don't remember the context for it because I've been drinking Jameson throughout this podcast. Uh, I, I just have in quotations casing fit like a condom, and I don't know what that's in reference to. I just know that's something that someone in this movie said. Something regarding a gun. Uh, but the the bigger thing was just the FBI's like case like file system yeah. in this movie. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like same levels as like Jurassic Park like file system. Like it's a it Unix doesn't make system. any sense. It's a Unix system. I know this. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Also, the FBI uses Macs in this world. Yes. You see a shot of the keyboard as as this is very early on, so pre like pre uh John Travolta switching with Nick Cage, he closes the case. Yeah. Like in the file system, he hits like command O. <laughs> and you can tell it's a Mac keyboard. And I'm like, FBI doesn't use Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's coming at you with the takes. The anti Apple. coming at you with the takes. Also, um, no regards for physics in this movie. The best kind of movie. The best for kind. Of, well, the best kind of movie is the kind well, that does, just doesn't. John Woo just doesn't care about John Woo. John, John Woo, Woo is not controlled by listen, physics. Listen, yes, he John exists Woo in a physics-free world. Is the same guy who set a nuke off underground and broke an arrow, and there were no consequences <laughs> for it at all. Forget John Woo is the same guy where. Tom Cruise and the the enemy person in Mission Impossible Two. Doug Gray Scott, fucking know his name. take like, take like, uh, uh, they like take ramps on motorcycles towards each other. Yeah, they jump off the motorcycle, they explode, and they go flying a direction that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they go flying like off a cliff sideways, even though, it, yeah, it's. John Woo doesn't care about physics, and it's great. It's the best. Um, so one of my biggest beefs was the ending. He brought Caster Troy's Damien Devil Child well, child, into a, his household. Gonna, it's, it's a second he's, chance. He's sweet. replacing sweet. Adam. He's he, replacing Michael, and it's like that. That, that is the creepy part, because well, like... He has like the same haircut. Yes. <laughs> as Michael. Jeff, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. What's up? The resurrected son. Stop. But it's weird. I get it, but it's weird. Yeah, it's a little weird. Because literally, but it's I, like, I, I this like is it. Adam. He's our new Michael. Yes. Make <laughs> him home. Deal. By the way, he's the son of the man who murdered our real yeah. son. Can and I, so I'm taking his son. Can I say an Adam thing that I forgot to say? Say an Adam thing. Uh, I think this movie hits a transcendent level like an hour earlier during like the fight scene at a, with right before the mirror fight. Mm -hmm. um, there's a sequence where like uh, they put headphones on Adam and say, listen it's to your somewhere music. Somewhere over the rainbow. And it just starts playing. Somewhere. It's barely an Olivia Newton-John performance, <gasps> which is fun. Really? Yes. Um, oh, but it's wow. like, so, um, as like, chaos is just unfolding it was it was it's a great song for that chaos yes. and it's like slow-mo chaos to somewhere over the rainbow also uh it. in case y'all were wondering about the two kid actors in this movie uh <laughs> so uh the person so because uh, at first i thought they were the same kid no i no thought way. it was the same kid no that way played both of them they don't it's two different kids Gotcha. Uh, so Michael Archer is played by Miles Jeffrey, who, after Face Off, did some things and is still acting to this day, but in very minor roles in short films. Mm -hmm. And then uh, David M David McCurley is Adam, and he was in Face Off and then was in 1998's Running Woman, and then proceeded to become an editor instead. <laughs> <laughs> good for it. Yeah, good for it. Good for him. Okay, so that's face off. That's oh, face off. Uh, Jeff, do you got any? Uh, um, oh, random thing. Oh, I got two random things before we get into the uh, M. Stewart. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> before we Don't get in, you catch that. Before we get into the the ending, I have actually three things. Okay. Uh, the first one, can we just acknowledge that this is like the best movie title ever? Yeah, it's a, it's good. It means like three different things. 
Yeah. It has the slash solely because John Woo didn't want people to think this was a hockey movie. <laughs> right. But it's like right because the f- there's a face off movie that is a hockey. Right. <laughs> yes. Face um, off. Yes. You got to put the gap. Yeah. You got to have the gap because they're it's facing off, off and they're taking their faces off. It's not face it's off. The best it's title. Face ever. off. Secondly, you know who plays the shitty boyfriend? Who? Um, Danny Masterson of the Danny Masterson rape allegations and trial uh, from that's uh, that seventy show. Oh no! Uh, so he was apparently playing himself in this movie. Oh, no! <laughs> and the third one, third one. Jeff. In case you thought I was going to forget, the hair ranking. Cue the music. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh All right. shit! All right, so Stu's doing the hair ranking. Yeah. Uh, so welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the hair ranking. I am your host, Stuart Elmore, and I'm Jeff, and I'm here to listen. Yes. Um. So we've talked a lot about how this period of Travolta. You know, they all have fairly similar hairs. There's not been a lot of change uh, from pretty much White Man's Burden onward. Yeah. It's been a little shorter in some, a little longer in the others, but for the most part, it's the same thing. We get more of that with this one. Um, he just kind of has his like gelled upward, like I don't know what you call it, but his gelled upward, like sticky hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, it looks good. It's a good look for him. Um, but you know, it's just, it's just more of the same of what we see him. And Stu, are you gonna put into account at all the face-off nature of it? Like, is Nicolas Cage's hair gonna count in the hair inking? I mean, I think we gotta. I think we gotta count this as two different hairs. Okay. Um, the Stu, thing is, once you put this in the list, it can't move. Yeah, I know. Just want to make sure you, but, Stuart Elmore, are yes. very aware <laughs> I, of I, the consequences. Elmore, the consequences <laughs> of my actions. Okay. Um, so we're putting two hairs in here. Putting two hairs in two here. Two hairs in here. Um, for the Travolta hair, it, it is more the same, but I like it a little more than some of the recent ones we've had. I think it's the gel that's doing the work. I think I would agree with you, Stuart. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm putting it right above... Uh, I'm going to put it r- right above Boris and Natasha, right below Broken Arrow. Where Where is that in the ranking? Um, actually, you know what? You know what? Put it right above Broken Arrow. What's uh, what's what's above it would, that? It would then? be above Broken Arrow, below Two of a Kind. I think that's fair. I think that's very fair, because it's, it's a little nicer than his Broken what Arrow What ranking hair. is that? Number 13. It would be number 13. 13. Now, um, as for the... Um, Casper Troy hair, the Nikki. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's a. It doesn't it's, change. It doesn't change, and it's the. It's kind of. It's like the too shortcut for Nick Cage. I don't like him when he has short hair. I mean, when you see Con Air Nick Cage. Yeah, like Con Air. Put the bunny back in the bag. Did um, you guys know that Con Air and Face Off came off in the same? Yeah, month? same year, same month. Yeah. So Face Off came off came out uh, January or June twenty seventh. Yeah, uh, that was its opening. Opened at twenty three million dollars, number one in the box office the weekend it opened. Uh, and four weeks earlier was the opening of Con Air. Amazing! Wow, what, what a, a big what a, time for Nick. What Cage. a time for Nick. Um, but as Con Air stayed number one in the box office until it was overthrown by Batman and Robin, uh-huh. which was then overthrown by Face Off. <laughs> Good for you, Nick Cage. Do not kill the dinosaurs. The Ice Age. That's a great movie. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Nick Cage hair in this movie. I would say it, it's still. gonna go. It's, it's gonna go classic Nick Nick Cage. Wait, so are we doing it's double a little rankings? Too, it's a little too short. So Stu, are we doing double rankings for this? You have double rankings. Whoa. Two rankings for Face Off. Okay. Um. You're John in charge, Tra- John Travolta does. This is your hair ranking. John Travolta does, in today. fact, play Nick Cage in a few scenes in this movie with the voice, so it counts. Um, okay. The real question I'm going to have to answer is when we get to Bolt. <laughs> if, we count, <laughs> if we count Bolt in this. Do with the hair ranking. Fur ranking. For Bolt. The fur ranking. We'll the get, fur ranking. We'll get there when we the get better there. Fur. Um, I'm putting this near the bottom. Okay. Um, it's going to go above Devil's Reign and the Experts. Um, because Devil's Reign just doesn't have hair. <laughs> what's 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 a uh, moment the by moment is above Devil's Reign. I think that's a fair spot. To so put I'm putting it. I'm putting Face Off right down here near the between bottom. moment by moment and the experts. Uh, 
Yeah, between de- moment by moment and Devil's Reign, because the experts Whoa. is below Devil's Reign. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Because it's, yeah. it's it's a war crime. Yeah, the experts is a fucking war. It's crime. a war crime, Matt. If you've not seen it, look up John Travolta, the experts hair, and see the the travesty that was put upon <laughs> us. That was just never. But again. also, while I was looking up picture of the hair, I found this really cool. Uh, dump- it's the dummy they used. Oh wow! Oh, the in between dummy. Yeah. For the the head slicing, yeah. The for the face being taken off. That's really cool. Oh, that's a great mullet. By <laughs> it's the way. a war crime. It's yeah, horrible. But yeah, that was uh, the hair ranking. Cue the music. All right. Anyway, so Jeff, do you have any like? M- impact for this movie anything or do you want me to do that again i think you apparently show up unprepared today. <laughs> again Stu, we switched roles today so yeah. i am doing all the audio yes. work for this so fuck you yeah and you can do so the... this movie huge success of course huge it said four times its budget at the beginning it um it cost 80 million only eighty. Only eighty million. Was, only yep. eighty million. It made which you double for it with marketing, yeah. but still. it made two hundred and fifty million. Wow. So more like three times its budget, but yeah. it made a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. This was a huge success. Um, it's what got John Woo Mission Impossible two, off the success of this movie. Um, it goes on to solidify Travolta and Cage's action stars. They continue to get action movies after this. Their only collaboration. Their only collaboration. This movie also gets rave reviews. Um, it has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, shockingly, an average of 7.9. Um, an 82 on Metacritic, which uh, has What a did Roger of... Ebert say about this film? Roger Ebert gave this film three out of four stars uh, and said, here, using big movie stars and asking them to play to each other, Wooners Rives finds a terrific counterpoint to the action scenes. All throughout the movie, you find yourself reinterpreting every scene as you realize the other character is really playing it. So, Roger Ebert, big fan of this movie. Yeah. Everyone was generally a big fan of this movie. It got nominated for the Academy Award for Best Sound Effects. Um, did not get nominated for Visual Effects, shockingly. Yeah, that's, that's very um, shocking. It would have lost anyway because this was the Titanic year. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But, oh, yeah. Uh, where it just sw- took everything um this movie is also um this movie's better than titanic it's a hot <laughs> that that is that is pl- you know what uh, I, I am jeff sweeney i agree with no, jeff sweeney no no that jeff sweeney, is better I agree than with titanic you. Face off is better than jeff titanic. that is a what wi- jeff that's a wild opinion i can't believe you said that um I, Stuart. You can't believe that I, Jeff Sweeney, have yes. wild op- opinions about movies. Yes. Look, I have seen three movies this week, right? Yes. I've seen The Green Knight, I've seen Suicide Squad, and I've seen this. Or The Suicide Squad, and I've seen this. The this Suicide is the Squad. second best movie I've seen this week. Is the best The Green Knight? <laughs> yes. The Green Knight Whips. It's a great movie. You should all I go see seen it. it yet. You should go see it. It's really good. But this movie, you know what it went to inspire? What? Um, this would go on to inspire Infernal Affairs. It's a Hong Kong action movie, which would go on to be remade in the U.S. as The Departed. Oh. Huh. So there is a, like, two degrees of separation of this movie a being the basis it. of The Departed. Wow. Which is p- pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, the only difference is they wanted to not have the physical face swap element in the Infernal Affairs and The Departed. So it's more of, like, a metaphorical swap. Right. But I think that's pretty cool. Um, they're apparently trying to make a sequel to this movie. Um, Still, uh, yeah, it was a director was announced this year, Adam Wingard, who did Godzilla vs Kong. Uh, no disrespect to Adam Wingard, but I hope that movie does not happen. How, like how? How would you? Yeah, like how do you do a sequel to this? It's got like this... Cage literally is dead in the movie. You only have Travolta. You're probably gonna have to have two other stars do the face off, and that would be a travesty. Like this, do any face off movie without Travolta and Cage? Get the fuck out of here! Like you don't, you don't need another face off. No, you don't. Make do- apparently Cage and Travolta are interested in returning. <laughs> Cage has like a twin brother. He's <laughs> like, I need revenge. Oh my god! Uh, 
because because here's here's like I could see them. Matt, can you talk closer to the mic? Sorry, that's mm-hmm. my bad. I I that's my bad. That's all good. Uh, uh, I could see them remaking this movie, trying to like just just do like a flat remake with like newer stars. Like I could see this working with like a Fassbender McAvoy duo or something like that. Interesting uh, pairing, but I like yeah, it. Yeah, interesting pairing. I I, Tra- I mean, Charles. I was thinking like the second I saw Nick Cage, I was like McAvoy. If they were to remake this, I would cast James McAvoy in it, mm-hmm. and the only natural, obviously, if I'm casting James McAvoy, I have to cast Michael Fassbender <laughs> the, in it. I would put the roles though. It'd be James McAvoy as Caster Troy and Michael Fassbender. Oh, of course, as, uh, as Sean yeah, Archer. As I, Sean Archer. Yeah, I, yeah, Mike James McAvoy because if if Split and Glass proved anything, he can exactly. He could do the, yeah, he can do crazy. Yes, or he can but, do he can play a lot of different roles in the same body. But like I could see them remaking, but doing a direct sequel, like it just it doesn't make sense. Also, like this kind of movie wouldn't be successful today. It's it's a star driven vehicle, and there's just like we've talked about like there really isn't a movie star industry anymore. It's a franchise industry. Right. And not just that, like this is like a cult classic. Yeah. It, it I mean it was number one at the box office, but it was still it's still very much a cult classic. And I feel like the way movies are made now, since there's no DVD sales anymore, yeah, it all has to come from box office earnings, and you you couldn't make this movie today. It requires a really specific like hit, yeah, to be like an original action movie nowadays that is big, like a John Wick, for example, that yeah. would that spawns a franchise. Oh, you know what? No, Keanu Reeves and Tom Cruise are who needs to be in Face Off. <laughs> Oh, who would you cast as Play the Caster face Troy? Off. Who would cast as the Sean Archer? Uh, Keanu Reeves as Caster Troy. Who? Wow. Um, random aside. Random aside. Random as we aside. all know, I'm a big fan of the Wait. dumb IMDb trivia facts. Danny DeVito <laughs> and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. Jeff, I think you're also a fan of dumb IMDb trivia facts. The ones that are always at the very bottom. Yeah. That, like, someone just wrote and was like, I'm so clever. Um here is this week's edition of Dumb Mind Your Trivia Facts. Joan Allen played John Travolta's wife in this movie. In Pleasantville, she played William H. Macy's wife. Travolta and Macy would go on to star together in Wild Hogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great fun fact. Thanks for sharing. Amazing. Other pairs of actors that were considered for Archer and Caster Troy besides Schwarzenegger and Stallone include Harrison Ford and Michael Douglas, Bruce Willis and Alec Baldwin, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, and John Claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal. <laughs> oh, Steven Seagal would be nuts in this movie. This movie would have had so much Aikido then. <laughs> if you, I watched, I watched uh, some Steven Seagal movies somewhat recently within the last year, uh, the Under Siege movies, <laughs> and it is so funny that man's commitment to doing as little on screen as possible. <laughs> the, he's like on top of a train. That is barreling down the tracks. They're like, you got to get to the front of the car. And he like slowly ambles along the top of the train to get to the front because he doesn't want to run in the scene. And that's face off. <laughs> yes. I have one more dumb fact. Hold on. I just I just read this. So the boot, the magnetic boots used by the prisoners here were reused from a different film. Oh, I saw this. A 1993 film. Stuart, uh, you don't have to pipe in since you know this, but Jeff, what 1993 film would you guess that those boots come from? Starship Troopers? It's no, Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> oh, my God. They were God. the Goomba are... Troopers. <laughs> the Goomba's boots. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's a way to save money. <laughs> It's why this movie was only made for eighty million dollars, which Jeff, is a lot of money. By but, this information, you know, a little bit, yeah. I think it's because we're at two hours and twenty minutes, <laughs> 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 and I'm ready to wrap this sucker up. We got another. No, we no, got another episode. We're not done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> all yeah, right, we're done. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for listening. Whoa, um, <laughs> you're launching right into it. Yeah, uh, Matt. Any final thoughts before uh, Jeff wraps this up? Uh, Stuart needs to edit this to be exactly the same runtime as the movie itself. <laughs> All right, you know, Stuart, that's your job. Yeah, I'll edit that <laughs> out for you. Um, it's uh, God, two hours, so 18 minutes versus 220-ish. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, Stuart, do you have any final thoughts before I close this out? No, um, Matt, thanks for being a part of it today. It was great to uh, have you back with us. Thank you for having me. We hope we'll have you once more in the future. I'm sure yeah. we will. Matt, oh, you're course. always a treasure to have. And we just th- thank you so much for coming aboard. And thank you, everybody else, for listening. Listening. Make sure to tune in next week for our episode on Mad City. Mad City. Uh, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to. As a reminder, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. You can find us at Travolting Pod on Twitter, Instagram for updates and other fun stuff. You can pop into our Reddit at r slash Travolting. Email any comments or questions to TravoltingPodcast at gmail.com. You can find uh, me, Jeff, at Jeff W. Sweeney on Twitter. You can find Stu. Oh, uh, on Instagram, at Stuart Elmer 95. Uh, special thanks to Rebecca Johnson, my girlfriend, for our graphic design and Michael Van Bodegum Smith for our theme music, hey, which you are hey, listening to hey Jeff. now. Jeff, what, what's up, Stu? Why is Jack Nicholson walking towards us with the scalpel um, in the surgical mask right now? I don't know. <laughs> what he's like gesturing like he's gonna take our faces off. <laughs> <laughs>